getting paid to make And bucks. you have that uh, media, the media thing. <laughs> I'm going to steal his chips in about 30 seconds. It, there's all kinds of stuff in there. Yeah, I know. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Uh, this is a, uh, it, well, let me start over It is Friday, April 21st, 2023. Uh, this is a regular meeting of the commissioners of the city of Rehoboth Beach. We are live in the commissioner's room, second floor of City Hall. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order at uh, 2.08 p.m. Uh, would you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'm, uh, roll call is next. Commissioner Tony Sharp. Here. Commissioner Jay Legree. Here. Commissioner Edward Chernowski. Here. Commissioner Patrick Gossett is absent. Commissioner Tim Bennett. Here. Commissioner Bunky Marker. Here. And I'm Mayor Stan Mills here. Uh, we have uh, uh, enough of a quorum so that we can formally conduct business today. Thank you all for being here. I'd also like to uh, identify our staff that helps make the meetings work. Uh, City Secretary Ann Womack is over there. City Manager Christian Lawrence. To my left, on my right, is uh, Glenn Mandalis, City Solicitor. Uh, uh, Evan Miller, if you'd raise your hand. Ass uh, Assistant City Manager, Kevin uh, Williams, Department of uh, Public Works Supervisor, raise your hand there. There you go. Uh, in back in the uh, bright red is uh, Executive Secretary Margaret Carson, and to her right is Lynn Cohen, Communication Specialist. Uh, Matt Janis, uh, Building and Licensing Supervisor, is over there. And in the very back corner is uh, Alex Burns, colleague uh, and lawyer to uh, uh, Glenn Mandalis. Thank you all for being here today. I also want to thank uh, all those that are here in person today. Uh, as typical, when we get to certain agenda topics, uh, there'll be an opportunity for you to uh, raise your hand, identify yourself, and uh, give us some feedback or input. Uh, and uh, we will welcome that. And also want to thank all those that are watching on the camera. Thank you for attending virtually. Uh, and uh, lastly, I want to remind everybody that the documents that we use and talk about, uh, and some will be on, uh, on the screen, uh, are called support documents. And they are, when they are ready, they are embedded in the agenda uh, for everybody to see prior to the meeting. Again, if they're ready. Uh, there is an ex uh, extensive amount of support documents in this agenda. So again, go to the cityrehoboth.com website, look up the portal, look up the particular meeting, seek the agenda. It's actually fairly easy to do. Uh, and you'll be able to see all the documents that we have in front of us. Uh, with that, I uh, want to go to uh, presentation of proclamation for Arbor Day. And uh, my voice is going out. It's okay. Okay. Not okay. It's feeling. It's like a feeling. Yeah, it's going on there. It's getting feedback. I can still hear it. Just stop. Today, April 21st, uh, 2023, is uh, Arbor Day. We actually celebrated uh, with the fourth and fifth. planting the seeds for uh, uh, our children to learn about nature and the value of trees and everything. It was an excellent thing uh, uh, that we did today, and they actually planted trees and saplings there. So this is the proclamation I read. Bunky's here in case my vo voice gives out, right? Uh, this is what we read today, so we don't have anybody accepting it. Uh, 
but uh, this is what we did. Proclamation, Arbor Day, April 21, 2023. Whereas in 1872, the first Arbor Day was celebrated in Nebraska with the planting of more than one million trees. And whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, and whereas the city of Rehoboth Beach is proud to have been recognized again this year by the Arbor Day Foundation as a Tree City USA, we're at 32 consecutive years and counting, by the way. And whereas our community recognizes that our extensive tree canopy makes Rehoboth unique as a coastal town and plays an important role in helping Rehoboth feel like a community and not just a beach resort, and whereas trees can be a solution to combating climate change by reducing the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cutting heating and cooling costs, moderating the temperature, cleaning the air, producing life-giving oxygen, and providing habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our home, fuel for our fires, and countless other products, and Whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas and beautify our community. And whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. Now therefore, we, Mayor Stan Mills and Board Vice President Patrick Gossett, do hereby proclaim today, April 21st, as Arbor Day in the city of Rehoboth Beach, and I urge, we urge, all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands. Further, we urge all citizens to plant trees to gladden the heart and promote the well-being of this and future generations. And it's proclaimed this 21st day of April 2023 with signatures on the mayor and vice president, uh, Commissioner Patrick Gossett. I want to celebrate with this man because he was there. His wife did all the, uh, most of the, uh, planning on the event, and he was there with amplifiers and music and guitars, singing it, and, and I can't get that song out of my mind. Trees, <laughs> trees, 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 trees. <laughs> so thank you for your part in it, and uh, thank you for that. Okay. Um. I'm going to say right up here, thank you, Bunky. I'm going to say right up here, and uh, I would call up up here for the next item of uh, business is proclamation for National Library Work Week. If we have any uh, representatives from the Rehoboth Beach Library, I'd ask you to come forward now. Okay, and Rachel, I don't know why I always want to be on the right side. <laughs> hey, Wheatley and Rachel, thank you for being here today. This is a proclamation because it's National Library Week which is April 23 to April 29, so that's next week. Sponsor is Commissioner Patrick Gossett, who unfortunately couldn't be here today. So I'd like to read the proclamation. Whereas libraries are accessible and exclusive, inclusive, places that foster a sense of connection, build community, and bridge equity gaps, and whereas libraries connect people to technology, providing access to high-speed internet, computers, and resources that are critical for accessing education and employment opportunities, and whereas libraries offer opportunities for everyone to connect with new ideas and become their best selves through access to multimedia content, emergent technologies, arts, uh, literary, educational, and culture programs, in addition to books, and whereas libraries strive to develop and maintain programs and collections that are as diverse as the populations they serve and ensure equity of access for all. And whereas, to adapt to our changing world, libraries are expanding and evolving their resources and continuing to meet the needs of their patrons. And whereas libraries have long served as trusted and treasured institutions for all members of the community, regardless of race, ethnicity, creed, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity, or socioeconomic status, and whereas libraries are cornerstones of democracy, promoting the free exchange of information and ideas for all, and whereas libraries, librarians, and library workers are joining 
library supporters, and advocates across the nation to celebrate National Library Work Week. Therefore, uh, we, Mayor Stan Mills and Board Vice President Patrick Gossett, do hereby proclaim April 23 through 29, 2023 as National Library Week in the city of Rehoboth Beach. And during this week, we encourage all residents to connect with their library by visiting the library online or in person to access resources and services. Thank you all for serving on the library board. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. We'll continue uh, with the agenda. The next item is correspondence. There are two pieces of correspondence received via email from Suzanne Good. Uh, they are embedded in the agenda, and uh, you can go and read them anytime. Uh, they happen to do with uh, the parking and transportation study. So thank you, Suzanne, for sending that along. Uh, with that, our next uh, bit of business is approval of minutes. We have two sets of minutes. Of uh, uh, one, f uh, both from special meetings. One is dated uh, April, uh, October 6, 2020, uh, and one is dated uh, October 13, 2020. We're doing a little catch up here, uh, thank goodness. And uh, the only ones that can vote on those are uh, that were in attendance at these meetings were the Mayor Sam Mills, Commissioner Jay Legree, and Commissioner Ed Chernowski. Everybody else just remained silent. Uh, gentlemen, are there any changes you see to these two sets of minutes before us? Uh, no, Mayor. I move we um, approve the minutes. I second. It seems like it was only yesterday. We have a motion by uh, Commissioner Ed Stranowski and a second by Commissioner Jay Legree to approve the uh, two sets of minutes in front of us, October 6, 2020 and October 13, 2020. Uh, is there any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We'll make note uh, that uh, those voting were Commissioners Legree, Stranowski, and Mayor Mills. And with that, uh, those two sets of minutes are approved. Thank you very much. Next item of business is uh, City Manager's Report. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. I wanted to touch up on a couple items real quick. One of them was in response to one of the commissioner's inquiries regarding T-bill investments. Our, our short-term T-bill investments uh, is embedded as a support document. Uh, the city is well postured uh, regarding cash management uh, and will reinvest these T-bill that are coming due this uh, this past month. So just that, want to close the loop on that one. Continue on with the city manager report. Uh, we definitely have a busy weekend in front of us. A uh, reminder for everyone about several events taking place tomorrow, uh, April 22nd, 2023. The annual city auction begins at 9.30 a.m. here in the convention center. Items to be pre pre previewed uh, beginning today, 3 to 5 p.m. this afternoon, and beginning again tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. The Delaware Solid Waste Authority is holding a collection event from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. tomorrow at Rehoboth Elementary School. Residents may bring household hazardous waste for free, safe disposal, electronics for recycling, and up to two boxes of documents for shredding for free. Uh, this particular item supports CDP Chapter 6 Transportation Infrastructure Action Item P. Uh, Rehoboth P Police Department is once again participating in the Drug Enforcement Administration's National Prescription Take Back Initiative tomorrow. Uh, Rehoboth officers will collect medications from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the Police Department lobby. Uh, beach replenishment is ongoing. They have arrived. We are happy to report that the beach replenishment is fully underway. A second dredge is expected to arrive again this weekend, and we anticipate that work will continue around the clock for about three weeks, with the bulk of the work being completed in Rehoboth Beach before the Memorial Day weekend. Knocking on some wood. Uh, this supports CDB Chapter 7 Environmental Protection uh, and Action Item A. Uh, State Road Pump Station. After some unforeseen delays of mobilization and equipment, the demolition of the current pump station is scheduled to begin on or about May 1st by our contractor, Ronka Contracting, and will take a couple of weeks to complete. The contractor will be setting up bypass pumps for the State Road Pump Station next week, and we anticipate the bypass will be operational for about six months. 
uh, spring bulk pickup. This is another reminder. Uh, city's annual spring bulk pickup service will take place over the next two weeks. Pickup on the south side will take place next week, April 24th through the 28th. Please note that School View area and Scarborough Avenue Extended are included in the south side pickup. Following week, May 1st to 5th, pickup will be on the north side of town. A list of acceptable and unacceptable items is available on the city website at City of Rehoboth cityofrehoboth.com backslash trash hyphen recycling. Additionally, twice weekly residential waste pickup has started this week and will continue through October. Uh, talk about sidewalk extension on Grove Avenue. The city is excited and we extended the pedestrian safety improvement project at the State Road Grove and Munson Street's intersection. Installation of the crosswalk has been completed as you know and now the city contractor is finishing up installation of a sidewalk that will connect an existing gap along Grove Street from 6th Road to State Road. A change order in the amount of $44,859 for the Grove Street sidewalk was approved as part of the competitively bid State Road Pedestrian Improvement Project. This change order is part of the work on State Road and Pedestrian Improvements Project as it continues and Adel contractor has been given the go-ahead to start this. This supports CDP Chapter 6 Transportation and Infrastructure, Action Items H, I, and J. And finally, I wanted to talk quickly about City Hall employee parking. Some of you might have noticed there has been some specific uh, bumpers put in the uh, City Hall parking. And with the influx of seasonal employees beginning to arrive this summer, the team had developed a parking plan and we currently have more employees than we have parking spots available. So what we've done to help alleviate the issue, we'll be designating that first row of parking in the convention center lot as employee parking seven to five, Monday through Friday only. Um, to, to help alleviate some of this strain. Uh, we will continue, the staff will continue to evaluate and review the parking to ensure we have adequate parking to handle city business. If any changes happen, we will make sure everybody knows. And finally, we have the street aid expenditures totaling $11,430.16. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the uh, street aid expenditures, please? So move. Second. Uh, we have a motion by Commissioner uh, Jay Legree and a second by Commissioner Tony Sharp to uh, approve the uh, street aid expenditures payment in the amount of $11,430.16. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And the, uh, uh, the amount is authorized unanimously. Thank you very much. Any, did anybody have questions of the city manager, Commissioner Legree? Uh what did, with the with the uh, change? What is the Grove Street uh, sidewalk project going to end up costing us? In total? Yeah. I would have to go back and grab that numbers right now. It's I'm, probably forty-four thousand eight hundred ninety dollars for a change order. The, for the change order, yes. And and what about the the pump station on on State Street? How much did we get out of that for? I don't know off the top of my head. I will have to get back with you and report that back at the next meeting. Thank you very much, City Manager. Anybody else? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, with that, we'll move to the next item of business, which is city solicitor's report. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple of quick things I wanted to comment on. First is um, the litigation involving 330 um, Rehoboth Avenue. That, if you recall, that litigation was in Chancery Court. Certain claims were dismissed, and they were asked to transfer that case to Superior Court. It's in Superior Court now. When it came to Superior Court, it had some claims that remained in the case that we thought should not have remained. So um, the city filed a motion to dismiss those additional claims. It's all briefed now. What I want to report to you is that there's a hearing um, on Monday, May 1st in Georgetown on that motion to, to dismiss. And I'll remind you, well, I guess I won't have another opportunity to remind you of it. So it's May 1st. Um, I don't have the time. I can get that time to you. Um, the other thing I wanted to comment on is that we met yesterday with Liz Lingo, the city arborist on the tree ordinance. There are some, it always seems like there's a few more things to do on it. So we got those worked out and I anticipate having that ordinance ready to go for your May workshop meeting if you want to, or if you're able to put it on. All right. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Any commissioners, uh, any questions of the city solicitor? Uh, if not, we'll move on to the next item of business. Uh, as you note, uh, departmental reports are next. Uh, they are written ahead of time and embedded in the agenda to save time. So we're not gonna go over those today. Uh, they are done by building and licensing, 
police department and fire department reports. And I do want to particularly thank uh, building and licensing and the police because they do extensive reports with very helpful information. And it is noted that they take time uh, to do, so we appreciate that. Uh, with that, that, we'll move on to board and commission reports. And, you know, as we get them, ho uh, hopefully we can uh, receive them and put them in the agenda. Uh, for the Board of Adjustment, we, uh, I did not get it embedded in the agenda, so, but uh, uh, they held their March Board of Adjustment meeting on March 27th at 2.30 p.m. Uh, all the members were there, but for the chair, Barry Brandt was uh, not in attendance. Uh, they had uh, three cases. One was uh, uh, Hal Dukes representing John Papa John, owner of the proposed Bellhaven Hotel, requesting an extension of three months for Case two having to do with uh, 111 Park Avenue. Again, a request by Hal Dukes, Esquire, for a variance to the building setback line and extension of non conforming structures. Uh, a license from the city had previously been, been granted for this, uh, and so uh, the request was granted with another 4 0 vote. Uh, case number three had to do with 40 Park Avenue. Uh, and they had multiple requests. The first request was for a variance to allow 14 feet of a single family dwelling to encroach 8.4 feet into the side yard setback. The second request was for a variance for a rear structure to remain 1.6 feet from the rear property line and six foot eight inches from the side property line. Uh, the request for the variance for the house and I believe that was so they could rotate the house, uh, was granted with a contingency that the historical structure remain and that the variance not exceed uh, the note, uh, noted uh, 8.4 inches. The motion uh, was made by E.D. Heron, uh, and vote was 4-0. The request for the variance for the rear structure was denied by a 4-0 vote. Uh, the appeal to the building inspector's report was denied, and uh, actually it was uh, a vote on that so it failed uh, and that's the report from the Board of Adjustment. Uh, with that we move to reports from the Parks and Shade Tree Commission which uh, uh, I don't have with me today uh, and then the uh, Planning Commission meeting uh, they haven't submitted anything yet you know they, they have a hard time they, they only met last well a week ago so uh, sometimes I give them a little forgiveness but we'll get something from them. Uh, with that uh, I don't have any committee reports identified. Uh, does anybody have anything short and sweet orally to, to convey to us about their committees? No, nope, you'll no. get some. <laughs> we'll defer everything to the next meeting or what? Uh, May, Mayor, I'll just um, give a, a brief report um, from the Environment Committee. Um, uh, from our meeting yesterday, just so it, um, it gets some um, it gets out there in the in the public um, and in the press. The Environment Committee um, met yesterday and um, recommended to move forward forward in an analysis and proposal with recommendations that the city adopt um, Senate Bill 51, which was just passed um, a few, I think it was about 10 days ago. Um, and it will be heard in the House within the next 12 days. Not sure if that will um, pass or not, but the Environment Committee had wanted to move uh, the previous version of this um, bill, which I think was House Bill 134 in the last session, um, which failed ultimately. Um, and this would eliminate, um, it would ban um, the I guess the, the display um, and ability for, for folks to take uh, plastic straws. Um, however, it would not ban making available um, any other type of uh, straw uh, made from other materials, such as paper, bamboo, um, pasta, soy, things like that. Um, that's the, the main, main purpose of that. If someone requests a plastic straw, they can still be given. 
uh, and the other piece of, of that bill, which the Environment Committee is asking the city to adopt, would be um, in a write out ban of styrofoam. And um, so just uh, to get that on everyone's radar, that, that an official report will be coming um, for the next meeting. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Uh, if not, we'll expect to hear from you at a future meeting. Thank you. Uh, with that, we'll go on to uh, liaison reports. Uh, the commissioners serve as liaison to certain agencies in the town. Uh, the first agency is the Chamber of Commerce. I am the liaison to that. Carol Everhart, uh, president and CEO of the Chamber of Commerce, was unable to be here today. Uh, so embedded in the agenda are some support documents that give statistics. Uh, for for that, uh, I'd like to just give you some highlights within within these statistics, uh, and that is for the three month period January one to April first, uh, the midday or Wednesday uh, occupancy comparisons uh, from last year to this year went up about twenty five percent. That's good news. Uh, but the weekend Saturday occupancy rates uh, from 2022 to 2023 went down approximately 12%. Uh, so again, those numbers are in the support document provided by the Chamber of Commerce. Some additional notes uh, in brief. Sidewalk sale weekend is May 5 to 7. Uh, they having their own shredding day May 5th up on a location on Route 1. So if you miss tomorrow, uh, you can do that. Uh, restaurant week is June 4 through June 9. Uh, the boardwalk kiosk is manned by the Chamber of Commerce again this year. They've hired staff and they've set up their schedule. Uh, they're open 10 to 2 daily, Memorial Day through Labor Day. So we thank the Chamber, uh, but also we thank the uh, VIA because they're the ones that man it weekends, whereas the Chamber mans it during the weekdays. Uh, and that's all I have for the commission uh, liaison report for the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, with that, we'll go to the next, uh, which is Commissioner Jay Legree, the liaison for the Rose Beach Historical Society. Thank you, Mayor. The uh, uh, museum has starting their summer exhibit on the 26th of May. It's going to run until first week in September. It's 150 years in in photographs, and it's uh, it's going to be. I have 50 placards of his, the historic, the historical history of Rose Beach. Don't miss it. Go see it. It's great. That it? No, very good. Thank you, uh, Jay. Uh, with that, we'll go to the liaison for Main Street, uh, Commissioner Shanowski. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Executive Director Dan Slagle and President of the Board Dick Berner is uh, are here to give the report. Welcome. And Cindy Lovett. Uh, Good afternoon, Mayor, Commissioners. Um, I wanted to start off by talking about our events. Uh, we're very proud to tell you that the Gumbo Crawl has sold out. We're really excited about that. Um, our next event will be the Margarita Crawl, which will be on June 3rd, uh, Saturday, June 3rd, from 1 to 4. We're in the process of working on our fashion show for March of 2024. Also, Paul Lovett, a historian, if you've ever visited his lecture, I recommend it highly. His next lecture, um, Rehoboth Beach History Lecture, is on Thursday, May 11th, from 7.15 to 8.30. It is at Victoria's. So if anybody wants more information, please feel free to contact me. Um, also, I wanted to, to bring up is that the reason I talk about these events when I meet before you is that um, it's important that these events bring a lot of revenue to our town. You know, right now we had a thousand tickets that were just sold for the gumbo crawl. So we're hoping that, you know, with that, a lot of people come downtown, spend money in the restaurants, also shopping in our retails. So it's really important for Main Street to have these events and talk about them. So I'm going to hand it over to Dick now. Thank you, Dan, and what a pleasure it is to be back with the mayor, commissioners. Uh, Incredible staff, city manager, and the residents. Um, thanks for this opportunity every month. Um, we are just about to kick off one of our annual programs in Rehoboth Beach Main Street, and that is the Cottage and Town Awards. This is an award program that involves a lot of our residents in a variety of ways. We give four, four categories of awards 
annually. Uh, residential new construction, residential renovation, which is re residential restoration and preservation, um, landscape, architecture, renovation, rest restoration, preservation, that can go either to a, a residential property or to a commercial property, and then one that is um, commercial renovation. So we're gonna be kicking this program off on May 20th, um, combined with a volunteer appreciation event at Grove Park, um, and uh, a, lot of, a lot more information will be coming out. Uh, the winners of each of these categories will be chosen in late August, and then we will have an awards program um, in, in September. So watch for additional details for that, please. Um, I've promoted this before. I'm doing it again because it's so exciting. We have this um, self-guided tour for $10. Families, individuals, residents, visitors, can get this on their phone for $10. Um, you've got several days to wander around our beautiful city and learn so much about the history, the background, the culture, and, and so on. So I suggest we all take advantage of this. Um, you may not know that we have a cooperative arrangement with uh, the Rehoboth Beach Homeowners Association, the Residential Association, um, the RBHO, RB, Rehoboth Beach Homeowners Association, or RBHA, okay, right. yes, thank you, um, utilizes the Main Street office um, for their various meetings, and so uh, we're happy to cooperate with them. Um, we share a lot of their information in our newsletter and vice versa. Um, and lastly, I would just like to thank the mayor and the commissioners and certainly uh, the taxpayers of this city for including us in your annual budget again this year. It's critical, it's important, and we are very grateful for that kind of support. And with that, I want to hand it over to Cindy Lovett, who heads up our Hoboth and Beach program. Uh, uh, Hoboth and Bloom. Bloom. We program. knew what you meant. Hey, hi, everybody. Real quick, a couple updates. You may have seen the fire truck downtown. On Tuesday morning at 7.15, they filled 43 of our planters that we don't have water access to. Took them three hours, and we now have a donation sitting over there for the fire department, so I thank them so much. We'd really be in trouble without that help. And uh, our oldies dance is May 19th um, at, from 7 to 10, dine downtown and come on over and dance. We had 250 people last year. We had a blast. We are cutting ticket sales off at 350 this year because we want to preserve the dance floor. So uh, get your tickets, they're $25 a person. You can get them online, you can get them at Main Street, you can get them from me if you don't know anywhere else. So the other thing I wanted to do is a banner update. You may have noticed some of the banners are down on Rehoboth Avenue, um, they've blown down. The majority of them that are down are where the Verizon poles were installed. Um, I don't know what, why that is, but um, I've been in touch with Ed Martin of Arena Signs and Mike Peterman and they both decided there's no sense rehanging them until the lights are installed in the Verizon poles, which apparently there's not a date for yet. Is that right, Kevin? I wouldn't say we don't have Okay, so once that's done, we're gonna get those banners up um, and get them back up. So um, that's it, thank you. Thank you, any questions of Main Street? Uh, you have anything else further? Well, thank no? you, any we, questions? We, we thank you very much. Thank Dan. you. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, we'll go to uh, back to Commissioner Ed Stranowski, who's also the liaison to the Cape and Lopen Senior Center. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Um, just one thing new to, to note, um, I think a, a lot of people have seen activity um, over on the, the land that the Senior Center owns on Hepron Road. Um, and I think a lot of people thought they were breaking ground and starting to build their their new uh, their new senior center. So just want to uh, clarify that the the lot there was um, uh, it was cleared so they could accurately do a land survey. Um, they have hired Horizon um, Philanthropic to uh, be their consultant for their their capital campaign. Um, they do not anticipate um, that um, fundraising efforts would start until September 2024 and that they would not break ground until sometime in 2025. Um, they also um, 
have not signed a contract yet, but do plan on also hiring Horizon Philanthropic to be their uh, construction manager. Um, they're a pretty well-known local group. They've done a lot of big projects like the Lewis Library, I think Milford Library, um, and other big projects in the area. So I uh, just wanted to make sure that um, everyone was informed on, on what's happening out there. Any questions? Thank you very much. And uh, lastly, uh, liaison to the Public uh, Library Commissioner Patrick Gossett is uh, not here, but we have uh, uh, the library folks in person. Uh, Kay or, or Rachel? Yes, ma'am. We welcome you. This is your first time, and uh, this is just your opportunity to share with us uh, anything new since your last. Okay. Uh, just for anybody that doesn't know, I'm Kay Wheatley. I'm on the board of the library. This is our new director who I want to introduce, Rachel Wackett. She began March? March, yes. So we're plugging right away. The main thing I wanted to update you on, and I'm using a cheat sheet because I thought Patrick was going to be here. Um, we have been advertising for the task force in the Cape Gazette and um, on social media and on the website and just trying to get as much coverage. Horizon Philanthropic is also helping us with that. We are running another ad in the Cape Gazette, and um, somebody at Horizon is contacting HOAs in the area and trying to make sure they know and to get participation. Rachel will be working with DDL, Delaware Division of Libraries, to be able to send an email to all current um, card holders and asking for participation. And we have also, we have the two commissioners from the town. We also have some, some names for the BIA and for um, Main Street. So we're continuing to put the task force together. The goal is to, we've changed the deadline for trying to get information on people that want to participate to May 12th. We're potentially trying to start meetings May 23rd or 24th from some initial input, it looks like Wednesdays are better days, so I'll share that information. And they would run every two weeks through the month of June, perhaps into July, um, mid-July. At that point, Craig Williams from Becker Morgan Group will also be attending these meetings so he can hear the public input from a design standpoint. And um, then he'll be let loose, so to speak, to work on design. And then we would get the group back together, I'm kind of guessing, I'm going to say September-ish, to um, take a look at design and to give further input. Any questions? Any questions of the commissioners? No, nope, thank you. Thank you. You passed the test. Good, good first time. I would just like to say thank you, and thank you for making me welcome in the area, and I look forward to being the face of the library. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me if I can do anything to accommodate you in any way. Um, and as we said, we serve the entire psychosocial spectrum. We serve all, love all, and everyone is welcome. So thank you. Thank you, thank thank you again you. for the proclamation. The wording in that was perfect. It's the private yep. library to a key. Thank you, Kay. Thank you, Rachel. With that, uh, we're, we've uh, accomplished uh, hearing from all our committee, uh, our commission liaisons. Uh, with that, we'll move to the next item of business, which is a public hearing uh, for a permit of compliance request by James Weiss Gerber of Rehoboth Pigs LLC, doing business as Downtown Blues to operate a new restaurant serving alcoholic beverages to be known as Downtown Blues, pursuant to the city code, Chapter 215 Restaurants. The restaurant will be located at 8 North 1st Street, and you probably will hear this for the next dec de uh, decade, in the location of the former Nicola Pizza and original right, board. Right, right. But we welcome you there. So, uh, that, you know, uh, 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 I'm not sure many people remember Boudreaux's. How many, how many even know of Boudreaux's? Boudreaux's Barbecue. They right? were in the first block of uh, Wilmington Boulevard, next door to. Uh, they had a golf, little mini golf next to them, and I think they've been gone for, uh, I guess, 15, 20 years. So welcome to the neighborhood there. Thank you. Uh, 
Are you Mr. Weisgerber? I am. I am Jim Weisgerber, um, one of the owners. Um, you may have anticipated my partner, uh, Steve Montgomery, being here. Um, everybody knows Monty. Um, but the other day he called me and said that he was going to, he was invited to play golf with the governor and Pete Schwartzkopf. And I thought he was inviting me to be the fourth, but he said, no, you make sure you get to the meeting. <laughs> so here I am. Well, thank you for uh, being here. We have a certain process. We're going to hear from the building and licensing okay. specter, and then we'll give uh, opportunity for the commissioners to ask questions. Uh, we'll uh, ask you to uh, market yourself, if you will, sure. and then we'll go to the public, because this is a public hearing. So Matt, uh, if you would, uh, yeah, whoops. oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Give Glenn I get ahead opportunity. of myself. The city solicitor, <laughs> Glenn Mandalis, will read into the record the documents that we have. Thank you, Mayor. And in full disclosure, I have represented Mr. Weisgerber and Monty on items outside of this. I don't have a vote here today, so I'm going to move some things into the record, but just want that to be on the record. Um, this is a permanent compliance hear hearing um, for Downtown Blues. Pursuant to Section 215 2 of the city code, no person shall operate, maintain, or carry on the business of a restaurant or dinner theater governed by this chapter until the owner or lessee has received a permit of compliance from the city, stating that said restaurant or dinner theater is in compliance with all the city's apl applicable zoning and licensing requirements. So that's why we're here holding this hearing. Um, a permit of compliance or supplemental, and this is pursuant to Section 215 5, a permit of compliance or supplemental permit of compliance shall not be issued to the applicant or to the Delaware Alcoholic Beverage Control Commission except by the favorable vote of a majority of the members of the city commissioners. In reaching their decision, the commissioners shall consider the following factors, including but not limited to. So these are the factors that you as a board of commissioners should um, take into consideration when deciding this application. First, whether the applicant has demonstrated that the establishment's primary purpose will be that of a restaurant or dinner theater as defined in this chapter. Second, whether the establishment meets all the city's applicable zoning and licensing provisions. Third, whether the establishment would be a detriment to the peace, order, and quiet of the neighborhood in the city. Fourth, whether the establishment will have an adverse impact on the neighboring properties or on the city of Rehoboth Beach, considering the impact on traffic, parking, and noise. And fifth, whether the applicant had made any false representation or statements to the city's employees or the commissioners in order to induce or prevent action by the city, not only in regard to the pertinent pending application under this chapter, but also in regard to the issuance of a building permit or business license for the subject establishment. There are a set of materials that all the commissioners should have, and I'd like to move those into the record. First, there's a public notice. Um, it was posted on March 28, 2023. It was also published in the Cape Gazette on Tuesday, April 4, 2023, and in the Delaware State News on Friday, March 31st, 2023. There's also a building inspector's report um, from the building official Matt Janis to the mayor and commissioners is dated April 6, 2023. It's in regard to application number 0323-02, restaurant permanent compliance for downtown blues located at 8 North 1st Street, Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, 19971. And Mr. Janis will give that report in a minute. Um, there was also an application for permanent compliance. It was received by the Office of the Secretary on March 2023. The application indicates being an application for a new restaurant permanent compliance. The submittal checklist is attached and signed by Mr. Weisgerber. It includes a city stamp indicating the fee of $1,250 $1, has been paid. Also included is the checklist for compliance with zoning code section 270-19, which is titled use restrictions. There's a sample menu for Bethany Blues and presumably that's gonna be the same menu for downtown blues. Um, there's a color-coded floor plan prepared by Fisher Architecture. It's identified as permanent compliance plan, sheet GS02, dated October 17, 2022. It's stamped received by the Office of the City Secretary on August 24, 2022. All sheets are dated May 27, 2022, and it includes a lower level sheet, two first floor plan sheets, a second floor plan sheet, a third floor plan sheet, and a fourth floor plan sheet. That doesn't make sense because this does not have multiple floors, so strike that last indication there. Um, there's also a application for state liquor license that's included and it's dated March 20, 2023. That's all I have to move into the record, Mayor. All right, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, with that, we'll move to the uh, building inspector's report. Matt? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good afternoon to you, the commissioners and city staff. Uh, before you today uh, is application number 0323-02 is a restaurant permanent compliance. Uh, as mentioned, it's for Downtown Blues, 8 North 1st Street on Rehoboth, uh, Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, excuse me, 19971. Uh, this is an application for a new permit of compliance uh, for a proposed restaurant to be known as Downtown Blues and uh, will be a license. Uh, the, ap the application does not include any application for a supplemental permit of compliance uh, for the dining patio, just to be clear on that. <clears throat> the following is a complete report for the application referenced above to be heard. 
pursuant to section 215-3. Uh, the applicant is Rehoboth Pigs LLC doing business as Downtown Blues. The name of the restaurant is of course Downtown Blues. Uh, the restaurant is a table service establishment serving lunch and dinner. Uh, again, the restaurant is located at 8 North 1st Street, Rehoboth Beach. Uh, pursuant to the plans submitted, the following is true. The property is in fact located at 8 North 1st Street, Rehoboth Beach. Uh, the structure is a one-story building with a proposed area for permanent seated dining in a C1 Central Commercial Zoning District. Pursuant to Section 270.13.C.3.D, a restaurant serving alcoholic beverages is a permitted use. Uh, the restaurant areas are as follows. The service area to include kitchen facilities, storage, restrooms, employee stations, hallways, and utilities. Uh, the applicant has listed 1,281 square feet. I have them calculated at 3,882 feet, and I believe that's because the basement was not included in their application for that, um, for that totality. Uh, the dining area is uh, 1,792. I have it listed as 1,361, again, to, um, uh, uh, it does not include service aisles, et cetera. Uh, so I think their calculations were a little bit over over generous on that. Uh, the permit seated dining is 103. I have counted 103. Uh, their bar area is 256. I have two additional square feet for 258. Uh, there is zero square footage of dance floor. Uh, there are eight bar seats listed on the applicant's plans. I have counted eight bar seats. Uh, the restaurant gross floor area uh, is 4,987 according to the uh, applicant, I have calculated 5,501, um, and I believe that has a little bit to do with the basement area again. Uh, ratio, ratio of bar to permanent seated dining is 8%. Uh, actually, I have a 7.76, so we'll go ahead with the 8%. Uh, pursuant to Section 215.1 definitions, there is no patio for this permanent compliance. The designated areas for proposed food storage and pre preparation are shown and labeled on the attached plans. Trash stories areas and grease traps are located on the documents. The distance to the nearest property lines of the nearest church, public park, and residence, residential lot are as follows. <clears throat> All Saints Episcopal Church, approximately 900.79 feet by way of north on 1st Street to east on Olive Avenue. Cranberry Park, which is approximately 1,154.79 feet by way of north on 1st Street to west on Virginia Avenue. And the nearest residential lot is zoned R2 at 28 Maryland Avenue, approximately 470, 407.22 feet north on 1st Street. The applicant has stated that the approximate uh, percentage of revenue between the sale of alcohol and food is 25% alcohol and 75% food. Authorization for the city to investigate is attached. Written and dated declaration by the applicant is attached. And the fee of $1,000 excuse me, $1,250 has been paid. Any questions? Uh, thank you, Matt. Uh, I'd just like to reiterate for each permit of compliance that, that the commissioners act on a certain set of rules that uh, city solicitor articulated earlier. Uh, and because we're acting on a specific set of rules, we need to be very clear in what the numbers are, the design, uh, the plans are, uh, so that that is clear to the public, but also the restaurateur and us. Uh, by example, uh, there was an indication of zero dance floor area there. That's important to know and make sure we know and that the restaurateur understands that that should you ever want a dance floor, you have to come back to this group. You can't just move tables around and choose for a night or so to have a, have a dance floor. Uh, a couple notes that I'd like to make, and then, and then we'll get to you, uh, if you don't mind, is uh, that the application indicates the 75 to 25 uh, percent ratio of alcohol to food, 75 percent alcohol. 25% food. The building and licensing report has it reversed and corrected. So if Matt, we could direct you to make sure that the application is changed to reflect the uh, the reverse of that, 25% alcohol. Uh, and then we've got some specificity there. Uh, I'd also like to make a note on page three of the application that it indicates you're going for a full liquor license versus 
the check box that says uh, beer and wine only. Just want to let you know and everybody know uh, that there is no separation of those two uh, anymore. It's either a liquor license, full liquor license, or nothing. That's an old application that, that we're working on trying to just erase it, uh, but it keeps cropping up. So uh, we'd just like to make that point. Uh, the uh, one of the one of the questions uh, usually asked by the commissioners is where your trash. And recently we changed the application, I believe, uh, Evan and Matt, to, to indicate that it has to be shown on there. And we see that you have trash storage area. I guess you use the alley yeah. that goes out to Rehoboth Avenue alongside the Nicola on the Avenue store, correct? Okay. Correct. Okay. So, uh, so that's taken care of. And uh, with that, uh, there may be more questions, but uh, let's, uh, unless any other commissioners have anything, then we'll turn it over to you, uh, James, and uh, uh, you can say nothing or you can. <laughs> well, we're, we're excited to open this restaurant. Uh, we have two, two uh, existing Bethany Blues restaurants. We opened in Bethany Beach in 2003, and we opened in, in up on the highway uh, in 2008. Um, we try to be, uh, we try to create, we try to create a good family restaurant. Barbecue is what we specialize in. Um, the the sales are we're somewhere between 70 and 80 percent food sales in our at both locations. Um, we try to have an affordable product that people enjoy. It's a great family uh, business. We we cater to everybody. You bring in your parents. You bring in your kids. There's kids meals. There's there's things for grown ups. You know, uh, we can have a great bourbon or a nice beer with your dinner. And uh, we are excited to be in, in, in Rehoboth. Uh, we did change the name um, from Bethany Blues to Downtown Blues. And the reason we're doing that is really to avoid confusion um, with people calling uh, carryout orders. We get about uh, three or four carryout orders every day that go to our wrong location. So we're hoping that when we say Downtown Blues, that people will know that that's uh, downtown in Rehoboth. That's the only reason it's not a Bethany Blues, hopefully to, uh, to alleviate some of those problems. But happy to answer any questions you guys have. Any from the commissioners? Uh, before we go to the public, I'd like to just make one more comment. I notice, uh, and this is more for our attention and the public's attention, that you also submitted a, a state license uh, application in there, uh, which, which allows uh, certain restaurants to apply for a variance to Rule 42.1, that's an old number, I guess, uh, to allow music on outdoor patios. I know you check no, uh, but I just want to make sure everybody understands and doesn't misconstrue that as that that is a possibility in the future uh, because Rehoboth Beach does not allow music on patios, and therefore the alcohol commissioner would not be able to grant a variance for that kind of thing. So okay. I just thought it important to, to make note of that. Uh, with that, this is a public hearing. We'd like to go to the members of the public, see if anybody have anything to say for or against or, uh, or neutral. Anybody? That must be, that, that must, I It'll interpret that as, ways, as I positive. <laughs> I, I think that's positive. Uh, with that, then I'm going to close the public hearing portion of this and turn it over to the uh, commissioners. Uh, is there any additional discussion? Uh, here you go. I, I've got it here. Uh, Mayor, I'd, I'd like to uh, make a motion to grant a restaurant permit of compliance. That's a, that's what I'm doing, right? If there's no supplemental. Yes, this, this they, is a uh, this is a new standard yep. permit. Um, I grant a, a mo uh, um, I move uh, we grant a motion of a restaurant permit of compliance uh, for uh, downtown Blues at Eight North First Street. I find the following to be true: that the proper application for a restaurant permit of compliance has been filed that the proper fee, fee has been paid, that the proper notifications have been made, that all parties wishing to be heard have been heard, that the primary purpose of a restaurant based on their application and menu, uh, 
sorry, the primary purpose is that of a restaurant um, based on their application and menu submitted, that the, res that the restaurant meets the city's applicable zoning and licensing provisions, that the restaurant would not be a detriment to the peace, order, and quiet of the neighborhood and the city, that the restaurant will not have an adverse impact on the neighboring properties or on the city of Rehoboth Beach, considering the, the impact on traffic, parking, and noise. The applicant has made no false statements to the city employees or the commissioners. Therefore, I make a motion that the city manager issue the applicants a permit of compliance for the operation of a restaurant called Downtown Blues, located at 8 North 1st Street. Second. Uh, we have a uh, motion by Commissioner Ed Stranowski and a second by Commissioner Tony Sharp. Uh, to uh, authorize the city manager to issue applicants a permit of compliance for the operation of a restaurant at 8 North 1st Street, uh, known as Downtown Blues. Is there any further discussion among the commissioners? If not, we're going to take a roll call vote. Uh, obviously, a, a favorable vote uh, is to issue a permit of compliance for this restaurant. We'll start uh, my left to right, Commissioner Tony Sharp. Aye. Commissioner Jay Legree. Aye, and welcome. Commissioner Ed Stranowski. Aye. Commissioner Tim Bennett. Aye. Commissioner Bunky Marker. Aye. And the mayor, uh, mayor votes aye. Uh, that is a 6-0 vote with one absence. Uh, and we thank you and congratulate you. And we, uh, I'm already salivating. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, Thanks, everybody, very I much. I want to compare you to... Uh, Boudreaux's, Boudreaux's Big Red, uh, <laughs> Big Red they called it. So you're going to have a lot of pressure there. Thank you very much, very much. Uh, James. Okay. We appreciate it. You're, right, you're actually welcome to thanks. you're welcome to stay or uh, or skedaddle, whatever you'd like. <laughs> Thank you. We we'll move on to the next item of business, uh, which is a public hearing of a sub. Uh, well, there's there's two parts to this. Uh, agenda item. First part is a public hearing of a supplemental permit of compliance. Supplemental permit of compliance request by Melissa Postles of Missy's Egg LLC to modify the floor plan of an existing restaurant serving alcohol known as Egg, pursuant to Section 215.11, modifications of floor plans. The second part of this is a public hearing to operate a dining patio serving alcoholic beverages in conjunction with the restaurant pursuant to municipal code use restrictions, dining patios. The restaurant and dining patio are located at 510 and 512 Rehoboth Avenue. Uh, with the concurrence of the mayor and the uh, uh, egg uh, owners, uh, we are deferring the second uh, item here. The making determination of a supplemental permit of compliance for the dining patio uh, until after the Board of Adjustment has made their uh, rulings on the requested variances by egg, uh, and we'll plan to have that on the agenda for the May 8th special meeting along with the other uh, permits of compliance. So today we're just going to be addressing the modification of floor plan so if you would do your best to try to focus on that, and then when we come to do a motion, the motion would obviously just deal with uh, amending, uh, modifying the floor plan. That, any question? Thank you, and, and we have the owner here, and uh, we'll let you introduce yourself in a minute there. Uh, you have. Hey, thank you, Mayor. So all the code sections that I read into the record for the previous one, we'll just, we'll just incorporate them into this record, and I won't go through that again. The materials you have in your packets, commissioners, for this um, hearing include a public notice that was posted March 28, 2023. It was published in the Cape Gazette Tuesday, April 14, 2023, published in the Delaware State News Friday, March 31st, 2023, and was provided to residents within 200 feet. Um, there's a building inspector's report in your packet from the building official, Matt Janice, to the mayor and commissioners dated April 6, 2023. It's in relation to application number 0323-04, amended restaurant permanent compliance. Dining patio supplemental permanent compliance, as the mayor just said, that portion will not be heard um, today. Uh, the location is at 510 Rehoboth Avenue, Rehoboth Beach, 19971. 
There is a application for permanent compliance received by the Office of the Secretary on March 22, 2023. The application indicates being an application for an amended restaurant permanent compliance and a dining patio supplemental permanent compliance. That portion, again, will not be heard today, just the interior restaurant permanent compliance. The, sub the submittal checklist is attached and signed by Melissa Postles. Um, it includes a city stamp indicating the fee of $1,250 has been paid. Also included is the checklist for compliance with zoning code section 270-19 which is titled Use Restrictions. There's a sample menu for Egg Restaurant in the package, it was, and it was received by the City Secret Secretary on March 22, 2023. Um, <clears throat> there is a Egg Restaurant expansion plans prepared by Moonlight Architecture and consisting of a cover sheet identified as sheet G001 dated February 7, 2022. There's an existing conditions record floor plan identified as sheet A101 dated February 7, 2022. A demolition floor plan identified as sheet A102, uh, dated February 7, 2022. A renovation floor plan identified as sheet A103, dated February 7, 2022. A seating and egress floor plan identified as sheet A104, dated February 7, 2022. And a door schedule, window types, and wall types plan identified as sheet A501, dated February 7, 2022. There's also a letter from City Manager Lawrence Christian dated April 19, 2023, related to Egg's permanent compliance application and the Board of Adjustment hearing. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, with that, we'll go to uh, Building Inspector Matt Janis. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, and again, good afternoon, Commissioners and City staff and uh, onlookers. <clears throat> Uh, before you today is application number 0323-04. It is to amend a restaurant permanent compliance. Um, it is a, an application to amend a previously approved permanent compliance uh, and will and add additional square footage, uh, but that's not part of this, excuse me. Uh, the following is a complete report for the application referenced above to be heard. Pursuant to section 215-3, uh, the applicant is Melissa Postles, uh, 37454 Burton Court, Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, 19971. Uh, the name of the restaurant is Egg, and the restaurant is a table service establishment serving breakfast and brunch. The location is 510 Rehoboth Avenue, Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Uh, pursuant to the plan submitted, the following is true. And the property is located at 510 Rehoboth Avenue, uh, the structure is a two-story building with an A2 assembly, which is a restaurant use, and proposed area for permitted seated dining in a C1 centrally commercial, central commercial zoning district. Pursuant to section 270-13C3D, a restaurant serving alcoholic beverages is a permitted use. Uh, the areas uh, are called out as follows, and they remain basically the same for the original uh, permanent compliance when you had a, a floor plan modification earlier uh, in the year or last year. Uh, so the service areas, uh, kitchen facilities, storage, restrooms, employee stations, hallways, and utilities uh, listed at 1359. I have it calculated at 1928. Um, the dining area is 1230. I have it calculated at 870. I believe those numbers work with each other um, to basically give us the same square footages. Um, it's just how we count different things. Uh, Permitted seated dining uh, is proposed 80, but I've only counted 56. <clears throat> um, the bar area uh, is listed as 83, but with the to two bar area combined, uh, the, two the totality of those bar areas is 203 square feet. Um, there is no dance floor associated with this application. Uh, the bar seats listed uh, as proposed is 14. I have calculated at 15. Uh, the restaurant gross floor area is 3,753. Uh, actually, it's calculated out as 2,813. Uh, the ratio of bar to permitted seated dining uh, is 14.5. Uh, we have it calculated as 26.8. Uh, okay, skip on, skipping I and moving on to letter E. The designated areas for proposed food stores in preparation are shown and labeled on the attached plans. Trash storage areas are shown, and the grease trap is not moving from the current location, uh, which should be shown. Uh, the distance to the nearest property lines of the, of the nearest church public park and residential lot are as follows. Um, the All Saints Episcopal Church, First Church of Christ Scientist, is approximately 
six miles in opposite directions. So both of those churches are approximately in the same uh, distance away. Uh, this is the one that really I, I, I find amusing is, is that Grove Park is 150 feet, where in actuality it's the, the median of the Rehoboth Avenue, as we discussed at the last one, that's actually listed as park. Uh, but it doesn't have an official name, so I count it as Grove Park as the uh, official closest. <laughs> um, uh, 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 excuse me, public park. Uh, the, the closest residential lot is zoned R2, and it abuts property to the south on Canal and Sixth Streets. The applicant has stated that the approximate uh, percentage of revenue between the sale of alcohol and food is 30% alcohol and 70% food. Authorization for the city to investigate is attached. Written and dated declaration by the applicant is attached. And the fee of $1,250 has been paid. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions of the building inspector? Uh, I do. I, I feel like this is deja vu. Didn't we just approve this recently? What, Matt, just in... Can you give like a really briefing uh, yeah, certainly. reason so the, on why this is coming back? No problem. Um, the application that you saw approximately a year ago uh, had a, had a, a bar area located in a different location. Uh, and because that bar moved during the construction process, uh, it had to come back before you. Uh, did the number of seats change at all? Uh, bl I believe the number of seats went up by one. It increased, so it did. Yes. It did we had seven, it's five now. From the originally approved, okay. Yes. Any other questions by the commissioners? Uh, I just want to, want to make a note again, as I do typically, uh, we note making note that there's no dance floor indicated. Uh, your trash is uh, indicated on the plan, so we appreciate that. Uh, just an FYI, you know, the, the nearest park, uh, they're also, uh, we have a Lewis Rehoboth Canal Bank, I think it's called. Evan, is that what, what it's called? Lewis Rehoboth Canal Bank. So they're all kind of generally equidistant, aren't they? Uh, the same note about the beer and wine. You're asking for a full liquor license, and uh, we'll change the uh, application later. And uh, the la da 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 da. Uh, property owner is omitted from the application. Uh, Matt, if you make sure that that's added uh, to the application. Uh, we know it's Cindy and Paul Lovett, I believe, the owners of Correct. the- Correct. Of the, of, of the property that the main restaurant is on. That, yes. That's Cindy and Paul yep. Lovett, essentially. Uh, and uh, I think that's all for me right now. Anybody else? We'll go to uh, oh, go just a, a question. So I, I, we're not hearing part of this permit of compliance. Uh, will the applicant have to pay two fifty again to come back? No, no. There's no. A, a deferral, and so there's no extra special noticing. If you recall, uh, the permits of compliance have to have a thirty day noticing period to get it in the paper, uh, and this would just be a carryover. So no, no extra fee. Anything else? No, thank you. If not, we'll let the owner uh, go for it. Hi, Missy Postal's Egg Restaurant, 510 Rehoboth Avenue. Uh, this is pretty simple. We just moved a bar from one wall to the other for logis plumbing logistics. Once the contractor got in there and realized plumbing's over here would be a lot easier and a lot cheaper than to jack up the floor, that's what we did. And therefore, the bar is a little smaller. It went from seven seats to five. And so we're just looking for uh, the permit of compliance. For the amend the uh, amended plans. Thank you, ma thank you. Uh, with that, uh, this is a public hearing. Would anybody like to speak uh, in favor or against or neutral comments? Now is your time. <laughs> nope. Well, okay. Going, going, going. Uh, no. Uh, we'll close the uh, public uh, hearing portion of this meeting and bring it up to the commissioners. Uh, for further uh, discussion uh, and uh, offer a motion if they would like. No discussion? Anybody would like to offer a motion? It, Mayor, I, I would at some point, this is not for discussion, but I'm going to make a statement. I, I think it's absurd that we have to hear this again, and I would really like to understand how a substantial modification of a floor plan is determined 
at, a, at another meeting. Because um, I, I just, I, I think that there, some of these should be able to be done administratively and well, not let's go through this process. So I would like to talk that, about it. Noted that, again. okay. Uh, would somebody like to make a motion? Otherwise, we're stymied uh, it, here. <laughs> I, I make the I motion. I think you all this, just really like having this the motion. <laughs> <laughs> here you go. I, I exited the screen. You missed me, so, didn't oh, you, Tony? Uh, uh, we're just doing a normal a normal restaurant. permanent compliance, which includes modification of floor plan. So we'll uh, Mayor, I move uh, we grant a restaurant permit of compliance for egg uh, Missy's Egg LLC. I find the following to be true. The proper application for a restaurant permit of compliance has been filed, that the proper fee has been paid that the proper notifications have been made, that all parties wishing to be heard have been heard, that the primary purpose is that of a restaurant based on their application and menu submitted, that the restaurant meets the city's applicable zoning and licensing provisions, that the restaurant would not be a detriment to the peace, order, and quiet of the neighborhood and the city, and that the restaurant will not have an adverse impact on neighboring properties or on the city of Rehoboth Beach, considering the impact on traffic, parking, and noise that the applicant has made no false statements to the city employees or the commissioners. Therefore, uh, I make a motion that the city manager issue an appli um, the applicants a permit of compliance for the operation of a restaurant known as Egg. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Ed Stranowski and a second by Commissioner Tony Sharp to authorize the city manager to issue the applicants a permit of compliance new permit of compliance for the operation of a restaurant known as Egg. Is there any further discussion among the commissioners? If not, we'll again do a roll call vote. We uh, rotate uh, who's first and second. Commissioner Jay Legree. I don't ever change your scrapple. <laughs> Got it, Jay. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Chernowski. Aye. Commissioner Bennett. Aye. Commissioner Markert. Aye. Commissioner Sharp, aye, and the mayor votes, uh, votes, <laughs> votes, votes aye, and so uh, congratulations. And Thank you, you also much. don't have to stay. You, Thank you welcome to much. Skedada. We'll see you. Uh, we'll be in touch with you anyhow. Thank you. Uh, thank you all. We'll go to the next item of business, which is the uh, another public hearing in the matter of amending zoning code section 270-77, dealing with the expiration of special exceptions and variances by extending the expiration date for certain variances and special exceptions granted by the Board of Adjustment. Again, this is a public hearing unlike the previous permit of compliance. Uh, in that uh, this is required, public hearings required to change the zoning code, and this is part of the zoning code. So I'm going to turn it over to Glenn Mandalis to give us a little uh, background, if you would, and then read the appropriate parts to the uh, proposed the ordinance that we'll be acting on shortly. Thank you, Mayor. So this this grew out of um, a, a, an experience with a application that had to go through site plan review, and it um, enlightened us in that. The current provisions of the zoning code require that once a variance is granted, that the applicant who obtained the variance must obtain a building permit within um, six months of getting the variance. And um, it is six months, right? Let me check it to be sure. It might be less than that. Six months. Six months, yep. Yeah. So, um, what we realize, though, is that sophisticated projects, large projects that have to go through site plan review, generally six months is not going to be enough time in order to obtain a building permit, because you have to have to go through demolition first and all these other things and, and get through the site plan review process. So what this would do is 
um, allow additional time for those projects that are going through site plan review. In fact, what it would, what it would do is it, the new language would say, if the proposed use or development requires site plan approval, unless otherwise specified by the Board of Adjustment, a special exception or variance shall expire if the applicant fails to, one, apply for site plan review within 45 days of the authorization of the special exception or variance, or two, obtain a demolition permit or building permit, or fails to change the use, as the case may be, within six months from the date um, final site plan approval. And then B, it says if the pro proposed use or development does not require site plan approval, the existing language remains and says, unless otherwise specified by the Board of Adjustment, a special exception or variance shall expire if the applicant fails um, to obtain a demolition permit or building permit or fails to change the use, as the case may be, within six months from the date of authorization thereof. And it continues with the language that the Board of Adjustment may grant one extension of time period referenced in this section for up to three months based upon good cause. So this, this again, I, it, it was inspired by um, the Bellhaven application because we realized that Bellhaven just cannot get through all the things that they have to accomplish under our code um, given the time frames that, frames that exist. So this ordinance, and so the record is clear, this ordinance is intended to apply to Bellhaven and the variance that it um, achieved, but we see other hotel projects and other large projects that could be filed and, and will also need the, the, the relief that this ordinance provides. Thank you. Any questions by the commissioners? Any comments by the commissioners? Uh, if not, this is a public hearing. We'll go to the members of the public. If anyone would like to speak? Yes, ma'am. Come ahead. Uh, come. Uh, can you turn on that microphone, Matt, or make sure that's on for me? We're going to ask you for your uh, your name and what your relationship is to the city, please. Yes, my name's uh, Deb Kennedy. I am um, an owner and also representative of our HOA, uh, Seaside at Rehoboth, Rehoboth Beach, which is on 6th and Grove Street. And as I've been hearing everything, and and I, you know, I am a resident, not full time, but I mean, it's full time, but I'm not. I'm basically here in the summer. The parking. Um, because of the popularity of egg and rise up is horrific and the sidewalk going in now which is great and we love that you know it's going right on our property on grove and um that's been a good thing except the traffic and the parking on on grove street everyone coming out of that circle i'm sorry i'm sorry forget forgive me i sure. i don't know if i misled you uh, the the topic in front of us today is whether or not to grant an, uh, a change in the ordinance to allow for extension of uh, variance. And so, oh, oh, and oh. so, if you'd like to make a comment, I'd invite you to sit down. And at the end, there's citizen oh, comment, okay. and that's the time we'd like okay, to hear. Okay, I thought from. it was. I'm sorry. So, so you th th consider this a rehearsal. Okay. <laughs> Keep that all. In thank you. Mind. Thank you. So hang tight. Hang tight. Any, anybody else want to speak? Uh, this is again is a public hearing because it's chapter 270 uh, is proposed to have amendments. Uh, here, giving everybody a chance, we will close the public hearing portion of this and bring it back to the commissioners. Uh, I'm uh, entertaining a comments or a motion to uh, adopt this ordinance, please. Uh, did you um, specify it, the date in which we would set the public hearing? The regular oh, this is the public hearing. This is the public hearing. You adopted the resolution last month to go to public hearing, and this is, and now you've had the pub, now you've had the public hearing. Oh my and, God! And now, now you can actually vote on it should you want to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not the only one that's busy. <laughs> <laughs> We're all and, and I'll just offer: the last time we talked about this, we thought this was a very reasonable <laughs> next step. So there we go. We've there done we go. that. So I am. Uh, we'll take any additional comments, discussion, or uh, start off with a motion to adopt. Uh, Mayor, I I move we adopt uh, the ordinance as uh, presented and read by the city solicitor. Is there a second? Second. I second it. So we have a motion by Commissioner Ed Chernowski and a second by Commissioner Tim Tim Bennett. Uh, to uh, amend Chapter 270 of the Mission uh, uh, Municipal Code related, uh, specifically Section 270-77, relating to the expiration of special exceptions and variances granted by the Board of Adjustment. One last chance for discussion. No. Uh, 
Do we, we have we to just give by a roll reason? call? Yeah, in, in we have reasons, to give a please. reason. And you can cite uh, you can cite my reason stated earlier about the timing of our code just doesn't provide for a, a means to get through the process. That's that's sufficient. I'm gonna think of what you want to say because I'm calling on you. Yeah, first. no, no, I'm I'm, uh, I'm I'm ready to go. Well, Commissioner uh, Ed Stranowski, please. Uh, I vote aye uh, because as the code is currently written, it is insufficient to allow the proper amount of time for the applicant to go through the process. Uh, Commissioner Bennett? I vote aye for the same reasons as expressed by Commissioner Chernowski. Commissioner Marker? I vote aye as well for, uh, and for the same reasons. And just want to reiterate, as you, as you mentioned, that this is, although it may appear that we have not uh, discussed this item we have discussed it at length and and we feel uh, you know uh, have, have come to our conclusions about uh, about the value of it and everything so thank you okay. commissioner tony sharp i vote aye because it is not only reasonable but it improves the timing requirement mm -hmm. commissioner jay Legree. i vote aye it's uh, well overdue and uh, the mayor votes aye for uh, all the reasons articulated by the uh, my colleagues here and the motion carries uh, six to zero with one uh, absent. Thank you very much. Thank you for everybody. Uh, we'll go on to the next item of business, which is the first item of old business. Consider proposed updates to guidelines for support document program. If you recall, this has actually been in front of us twice. Uh, there wasn't any discussion, I don't think, either time. Uh, we did, the original policy was uh, made back and adopted by the commissioners in January 24th, 2014. Uh, and it only applied as a template, a model, if you will, to the Board of Commissioners. Since that time, we've actually expanded it to all the other committees, commissions, and boards, and task force. Uh, so it's actually been in, in use. Uh, note that uh, it is voluntary, uh, but we uh, change the language to rather than encourage, we urge the different boards, committees uh, to uh, utilize this uh, updated support document program. And I have to tell you, I've been to a lot of meetings statewide, different communities, and we have probably the, one of the best, if not the best, support document program in all of the state. So. Uh, is there any discussion of this by the commissioners? Mayor, I move we... Uh, okay. If you don't mind, let me go to the public real quick. Oh, I'm is sorry. there any members of the public want to say anything? I'm not getting anything. Ed, go ahead, please. Uh, Mayor, I move we approve the updated, um, the proposed updates for guidelines for utilizing the online support document program. Second. So we have a motion by Commissioner Ed Stranowski and a second by Commissioner Tony Sharp to uh, adopt the updated guidelines for utilizing an online support document program, original adoption date uh, January 2014, and the updated date as February 27th, 2023, and originally presented March 6th, 2023. Is there any additional discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that is also carried unanimously by those present. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, we are going to move on to the next item of business, which is consider authorizing a license agreement for a dining patio to be in, located on public space for Mason's famous lobster rolls. The restaurant and dining patio are located at 67 Rehoboth Avenue, uh, and you have a draft license agreement in front of you. If you will, this is a test for our new system. Uh, Evan Miller, uh, Assistant City Manager, worked with Glenn, uh, I believe, to develop a template license agreement to make it easier on us, uh, especially as we hear additional uh, request to use public space for outdoor dining, that is using our public sidewalks. Uh, so they've done a great job, it looks like, on this original template. Doesn't mean we can't add conditions to it. Uh, that is certainly allowed. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, one thing is uh, this one does need a date, would, would need a date inserted in the very first line. Uh, and I would suggest adding uh, the 21st in line number one uh, because it's already labeled Friday, April 21st on the 
in subsequent spaces. Uh, so that makes sense. Um, do you, do you, you created this. Do you want to give a, a general preview, especially since this is the first time we're doing it? And the interesting thing with this case uh, is it does not accompany a permit of compliance because this particular restaurant does not serve alcohol and doesn't intend to serve alcohol. They just want to be able to utilize their outdoor space on public sidewalk uh, to be able to put some tables and chairs there. Thank you, Mayor. So I will um, credit Mr. Burns with actually being the, 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 the primary drafter of this working with, with uh, Mr. Miller. So, but what it does is you, you, you all typically, um, when you allow the utilization of city property, public lands, you typically do it through a license agreement rather than through a lease or some other higher form of, of um, ownership. So, so this is a license agreement. It allows, and it's consistent with the outdoor dining on public property um, protocol that you that you put into place previously. Um, it would allow um, Mason's famous lobster rolls, who, which is Rehoboth Lobster Company LLC, to occupy some of the space in front of its uh, of its establishment. The license under paragraph two expires um, December 31st, 2023. So each year that you that, that a restaurateur wants to have outdoor dining on public space, there's a requirement to get a new license each year. Um, as you see in paragraph number three, the license can be suspended by the city manager for community or special events, utilities, sidewalk, road repairs, emergency situations, violation of provision contained in chapter 215, or any other reason deemed necessary or convenient by the, by the city. Um, skipping to paragraph six, um, all dining patio use restrictions promulgated under chapter 270 zoning apply to the outdoor dining on public space. So all those provisions that we have for patios, such as no amplified music, all those sorts of things apply to this to these licenses. Um, in paragraph eight, you'll see there's a requirement for a certificate of, li of liability insurance that's attached as an exhibit to the back of the license agreement. Um, jumping to paragraph 10, the licensee is responsible for maintaining the sidewalk within the adjacent uh, area to the dining area in a clean and orderly manner. Um, and finally, in paragraph 11, there's a license fee that you established previously of $325. And that's generally the license agreement. There are other provisions that are necessary to be in there, indemnification, those sorts of things. But, but that's, those are the general terms of the license agreement. Any questions? Did you mention the length of time? So it expires December 31st of this year. I thought that's what you said, of 2023? Of 2023. So when it expires, we have to do this again? Or that's they the have to do it again? Yeah, that's the way it's currently set up. If, if, if Correct? If, if there's some other process you'd like, you know, to, so they can be administratively reissued <laughs> the following year, that's certainly something that you all can talk about and put in place. But, but currently, they're one year, they're one year, or I mean, they're, they term out at the end of the year, and they'd have to come back for a new license. And, and I'll just say, I'll... I trust the good judgment of our new city manager that once uh, he's got his feet a little bit more on the ground to make a recommendation whether or not some of these things could uh, be administered by staff. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a couple comments. Uh, again, we want to insert uh, in there the uh, 21st day in the very first uh, paragraph. Uh, a couple notes here that uh, this is, again, this is the first time doing this. Yeah. And we need to make note, I believe we need to make note that this is different than a license agreement. By example, the one on uh, uh, second block of Olive Presbyterian House, where we were granting a license agreement to for stairs and an outdoor shower to encroach into city park, city property. That's a different pro uh, process. Remember the, the uh, fee schedule we did for that type of license agreement was the $325 submittal fee. Then there was what a 35, help me out, Evan, $35 annual billing $30. fee, $30, $30, mm -hmm. $30 a billing. And then there was a potential for an annual fee additionally, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so let's look at what we have here. Uh, there's a $325 fee for, well, that's the license fee, right? So there's no license process fee, right? There's a $150 fee for any new application or reapplication. 
for a license can, for outdoor dining. Can you can you point to that in this? Because I don't. You got a paragraph. I'm paragraph. on. Well, I'm, I'm on page four, item number eleven, that says non-refundable license fee of three hundred twenty-five dollars, and I'm trying to ascertain: are there is there an annual fee? The so the three hundred twenty-five dollars is the annual license fee. There is in. The amendments that we recently passed in Chapter 215, 215, Section 24, fees mentions a non-refundable fee of $150 shall accompany any new application or reapplication seeking a license for outdoor dining on public space. But is, is that, forgive me, but is that in here? That is not in the license agreement. No, that's in the code. So, so it's $500 every time. Is that what it is? What? Mm -hmm. How much? 500 uh, no, it'd be four seventy-five. Is it one only 150? for the only for the one fifty and three twenty-five? Right. Okay, but the one fifty only applies for the first time, and then it, annually it's the three twenty-five. Um, that uh, the code reads: Upon granting of the license, the applicant shall pay an annual, an additional annual non-refundable fee of three hundred twenty-five dollars. So that. It does say annual non-refundable fee of 325, so it would be annually, yes. So 475 for the first time, first year. 150 for the application fee. Um, right, so when you come to the window, you say, I, I would like a license to be considered. Here's my application fee here, right. and $150 accompanies mm -hmm. it. Then if the license is granted, it's another 325 right. for the license. Mm -hmm. And then when this one expires, in December of 2023, what happens? Then they uh, they can submit a new application. They pay a $150 application fee. Uh, and then once the building and licensing department reviews the application, ensures compliance with the design manual, that's when the uh, license agreement comes back before the Board of Commissioners. If it's uh, agreed to enter into that license agreement, it's the $325. So it's 475 a year? Yes. Well, so my, my question is, is this clear enough to the applicant that they don't come back to us and say, it only says 325. Well, they've, I guess they've already paid the 150. Right. So that's why this is, okay. once you enter this, you got a 325. That, right, but I think as I understand this, we're asking them to pay 150 again to renew yes. for the application. Mm -hmm. at, as, the, as the protocol was established the, for any new application, and since this expires at the end of the year, there'd be a new application. I, it, I'm not. Uh, it, this is not how I remember no. us. What us agreeing to, but this was a while ago. Well, and again, this is a little little different than the Olive Avenue example, which is even different than the next one above the dunes that we're going to do. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I guess what I'd suggest is that if if you know if, if you want to make a change so that you know a resubmission is handled administratively or the fee is is not as high for all restaurant license you can do that going forward at, a, at another time i don't think it's really it shouldn't hold this one up it's still a fee of 325 dollars for the license itself you're really concerned about what happens next year yeah right well, yes well, renewal well, let me, yeah right. and let me let me talk through it for myself 325 non-refundable license fee that gets them for one year essentially right we for the other types of license agreements, we've said that $30 annual fee, that was to cover annual billing. Mm -hmm. Well, there is no annual billing here. They have to resubmit Correct. on a yearly basis. So, so let's get that out of the way. Uh, and, then, and then for the other type of license agreements where we have set, potentially also set a annual fee mm -hmm. uh, to cover use of city property, that doesn't need to be put on here also because this is, again, an annual fee, and I would say that that 325 covers that. But maybe when we have this discussion about administrative reissue for the second one, not the first one, but the second one, then maybe we can uh, address the fee structure at that time too. Because to me, if they're reapplying the same exact footprint and floor plan, then maybe there's a way to waive it or give a reduced fee or, or something like that. I mean, the first time to me is like an origination fee. And then if all things are equal, 
in year two and three and four and five, that seems to be mm -hmm. something that I, I guess, as I said last time, the city manager can take a look at and, and you know, across the board, how are we doing things to make sure things are fair and equal sure. so that we're not um, viewed as being more bureaucratic. I, maybe I'm I'm going back thinking about this discussion on on you know the outdoor dining on public space, but and maybe I'm I'm confusing with what I wanted to happen to what actually happened. But I thought these were in perpetuity, um, once granted, and like any other license agreement, we can rescind at any time for any reason. That's that's not how it. That's is. not what. That's not how the. That's not how the Orns ordinance currently reads. Uh, but certainly what we could do, I mean, if there's interest amongst the commissioners to pursue that uh, approval level from the city manager, I think um, certainly if we are getting an application next year uh, for the exact same outdoor dining on public space that was set up for this year, uh, if that is the interest is to allow those things to be handled administratively, I can work with the city manager and we can draft an ordinance and bring that before you at a future meeting. That's what I just said. I want credit for saying that. Mayor, <laughs> Mayor, is this? I know we were we talk about having it on a future agenda, but this again highlights my concern that our fees are all over the map. And are we going to have a discussion just about our fees and our fee structures sometime? Yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. Call the city manager. Thank you. We're good. Uh, so with that, uh, I just want to make one note, and that is that uh, up on the drawing there, you see some barriers there. Uh, again, this, this particular restaurant is not serving alcohol, so they're not guided by uh, the alcohol commission that requires barriers. They're not required to put barriers up for us for permitted compliance. But Evan, I believe our design manual That's says correct. if you're going to use the outdoor sidewalk, then you need to put up barriers. So that's, that's correct. Just wanted to reiterate that, that that's that's there. Sure. Uh, if there's no further questions up here, we'll go to members of the public. Would anybody like to make a comment on where we might be headed with this? Your name and relationship to yep. the city. Carolyn Diefendorfer, city resident. Uh, I hear what you're saying. I agree that if there's no change in next year's application, that you need to find a way to do it administratively. It it slows having to come back before you just slows the process down and makes more work for you. Thank you. That's for a future discussion. Thank you, Carolyn. Uh, with that, if there's nobody other members of the uh, public, we'll bring this back to the commissioners to uh, further discuss, comment, or I will entertain a motion. Can I just pose a general question? Um, I, I'm, I, I'm, I guess it's more directed to Glenn, but with regard to, um, I, I'm just trying to think of like worst case scenarios in the event that let's say these guys don't, either don't comply with, I don't I'm just making a bit, uh, uh, examples, uh, with cleanliness, they go out of business, the, the place looks a wreck, you know, or, or some kind of thing that, that would not be in keeping with the way we would expect the uh, you know, the, the owner, restaurateur, or whatever, to you know maintain the maintain the property and so forth. Is does does this contain? Do, do we do we feel that this contains criteria that would allow us to basically act upon that, or would we have to wait a year or some kind of thing? I'm I'm just just concerned about how. If if this went wrong, what 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 what, what maybe happens? Maybe Glenn can answer with respect to the lease, and Evan can answer with respect or, or to whatever the design whomever, whomever, manual and yeah. code. Or right, right. So the the difference here between what we deal, what you all deal with, oftentimes is this, this is this is public property versus private property. Private property, you know, there's constitutional rights that you have in your private property. So anytime government wants to exercise control over your private property. There's a lot more procedure that we're required to do, mm -hmm. like you know, constitutional due process. Mm -hmm. But here, when it's public lands, it's your property, and you're licensing somebody the use of it. So you have a lot more discretion, and that you know you're not required to go through the levels of due process that you'd be required to go through mm -hmm. on on private property. So Section Three says, licensee licensee agrees 
that its limited right to use the outdoor dining area on public space may be sus suspended by the city manager for community or special events, mm -hmm. utility, sidewalk, or road repairs, or emergency situations, or violations of provisions contained in Chapter 215 restaurants of the Municipal Code of the City Road with Beast 2001 as amended, or any other reason deemed necessary or convenient by the licensor. So okay. any mm -hmm. reason that we that you as a city deem necessary or convenient, you can, you can revoke the license. And I think in this context, because it's public land, mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't have the kind of challenges you'd have in a private property scenario. The, the, I, I just wanted to be clear on yeah. that. Okay. The other thing that I would add to that, Commissioner, is um, actually what Alex had done in drafting the license agreement was uh, he brought in a lot of the things in the design manual, a lot of the important items of the design manual that we want to incorporate into the license agreement. So section 10 actually addresses uh, the restaurant owner or operator being responsible for maintaining the sidewalk within or adjacent to that outdoor dining area uh, in a clean and orderly manner. So that addresses drink spills, trash, uh, and the removal of any trash has to be done in private receptacles, not in public receptacles. So. Okay. Thank you. I, Glenn, I, I don't want to hold it up for this, but um, you, re you referenced <clears throat> Uh, section three, which which gives the city manager discretion to suspend. Mm -hmm. um, on uh, sorry, um, there's another section that um, uh, there's one section here. I'm trying to find it where it can be uh, the license can be revoked if they are um, breaking or you know not adhering to all of the zoning and building code um, sections but there's no right that's too uh, you know grounds for revocation if uh, they're not meeting uh, chapter uh, 215 but I don't see anywhere where there can be a revocation for for no reason at all, um, other than them not adhering the 215, which I would think we would want somewhere. Well, I think it leaves an opportunity for us to act for something that we don't know that, that crops up or something, you know? When, yeah. we, when we redid the boardwalk, uh, you know, we, we could not get the pile drivers under the second floor decks of some of the buildings. And we ended up working around it, but if we couldn't have worked around it, then we would have need to have gotten rid of it. So I don't know if that, you know, there's, there I, are situations that crop up. Yeah, I, I don't think we, I don't, you don't need to, we don't need to resolve that today, but if we are gonna go back and look at the ordinance um, and possibly look at this again, we might just wanna make sure that there's, there's a catch-all ability for revocation. Um, Uh, but otherwise, I'm um, I'm happy to just move move this forward for the time being and reevaluate the the process and the ordinate ordinance going forward. All right. Uh, would anybody like to make a motion to uh, authorize uh, uh, entering into the license agreement with uh, Masons? I move uh, we authorize the city manager to enter in a license agreement with Rehoboth Lobster Company LLC. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Ed Chernowski and a second by Commissioner Tony Sharp to authorize the city manager to enter into an agree license agreement with uh, Rehoboth Lobster Company, LLC. Is there any further discussion? Just, Mayor, before, yes, you, sir. before you vote, you, you're the, actually the signatory to this document, so authorizing the city manager to, to oh, okay. procedurally do it, but you're still the signatory. Um, I'm going to amend my motion to uh, remove the city manager and, and replace it with mayor. All right, seconder. Is that our Second. seconder? That's fine. All right. Any further discussion? If not, I'll do a roll call vote. Uh, uh, Commissioner Bennett? Aye. Commissioner Marker? Aye. Commissioner Sharp? Aye. Commissioner Legree? Aye. Commissioner Stranowski? Aye. And the mayor votes aye, and the uh, uh, license agreement is authorized. Thank you very much. We'll move on to the next item of business, uh, which is to Consider authorizing a license agreement. Thank you, Evan. 
Consider authorizing a license agreement for a dining patio to encroach over public space for above the dunes. The restaurant and dining patio are located at 101 South Boardwalk, second floor. Uh, if you recall, this is the location of the, uh, what was formerly named the Green Turtle on the second floor at the uh, southeast corner of Wellington Avenue at the boardwalk. Uh, Evan, do you want to give a history of this? Or, or I think the history of it is that we gave them a permit of compliance not long ago. And within that permit of compliance, it said we shall or they shall obtain a license agreement to let that balcony encroach over city property. Uh, and Evan was doing some research, I believe, and found that we had not uh, executed that. So that's what this is, is uh, doing some, some past uh, housekeeping, uh, if you will. Do you want to give any more detail, Glenn, to this at all? Or? I'll, I'll just note, Mayor, that in, in paragraph one, it describes the cantilevered balcony patio it protrudes um, into the city's Wilmington Avenue property approximately 60.1 feet in length and 5.9 feet in width, and into the city's um, South Boardwalk property approximately 100 feet in length and 6 feet in width. Um, the other provisions of this are very close to other encroachments that you've, that you've done previously, like the one on Olive Avenue. So this license tracks those licenses probably closer than the Mason's license that you just looked at. But other than that, Mayor, I don't have anything. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to. Oh, this has the old. I'm not going to spend time looking for it. Essentially, if you recall, uh, it's a rectangular building on the boardwalk, southeast corner of Wilmington at the boardwalk. Uh, it has a, a length of uh, balcony overhanging the boardwalk and city property uh, directly over the boardwalk, but also. Uh, on the Wilmington side, it's L-shaped second floor balcony, uh, also encroaches over city property on the Wilmington Avenue side. So is there any, any uh, discussion up here before we, before we go to the members of the public? Anybody up here? No, nope. any member of the public like to speak on this? No, nope. okay. Uh, is there any fee schedule here on page sure. two? 325 for the preparation of license agreement, uh, administrative fee of $30, and then a fee of $10. Now this is again a, another unique situation. You know, we don't, uh, we have, unfortunately we haven't gotten to the point where we have concluded the awning discussion. And, and uh, although, although, are we gonna stay away from paid license agreements for awnings. I don't know what we're doing, but um, uh, you know, do we really want to charge that $10 annual fee? It is different than, again, I keep going back to the Olive Avenue one, where it was merely a, two stairs out the back door that overhang uh, or encroach in the city property and a maybe a six foot by eight foot outdoor shower. Uh, and because that was an old one and we lost the paperwork, we only we, we gave them a minimum fee, a good deal on it. So do we really want, are we happy with this fee structure for this? It overhangs, it does not encroach or impede the pedestrian. It's really not necessarily using city property because it's over the city property. When we discussed this before, I remember you had questioned about whether there was barriers around the, um, you know, glass so cups wouldn't fall over and that sort of I, thing. But was that not, did, did we, what did we not do in that one that were, because you said this is housekeeping, we didn't approve this before, or did we? I mean, we approved the restaurant before, didn't we, the permit of compliance? Right, my, my recollection is you, were, you approved the permit of compliance subject to a license agreement that had to, had to be done so i guess there's one argument that you had already approved a license agreement but so had they already paid for the license no. okay well whose responsibility was it to execute the license agreement the applicant or the city i mean we we prepare the license agreement when when the when the application came before you you were asked to grant a permit of compliance and 
you granted the permanent clients but recognize that there is this encroachment that should be cleaned up and should have a license agreement so you author you directed me to create a license agreement i wasn't so certain that it needed to come back to you because arguably you've approved it but we kind of thought best that the commissioners get a chance to see it it's your property and you you x you're the ones who ultimately decide whether a license agreement can be granted or not well in the permanent compliance we already agreed to do it I, I, and, and i think there's a good rationale to do it what, what i would question though is the fee structure you know unlike the masons where they're encroaching on public space and it's an annual license uh, this this license like the olive avenue one uh it goes with the property correct so this is pay once you're 325 and that's it now if we want to if we want to bill that ten dollars a year then they would necessarily have to pay that 30 for 30 dollar administrative fee because because we're billing it uh i think i for unique unique circumstances of something encroaching over city property i think i'm willing to go with just the uh, 325 initial license agreement and and that's it i would agree i would agree it's like grandfather it's part of the building i mean it's right i mean if somebody else buys it it's just, it's Goes. part of the building yeah that's what we've decided right yeah mm -hmm. uh so we would stretch the second sentence in paragraph three starting with um you would strike the second, third, and fourth sentence. I don't know if I. Yeah, that's right. Every everything after the uh, first sentence. So it's paragraph three. We just read: licensee agrees to pay the licensor the following fees in connect the following fee in connection with this license agreement. Licensor agrees to pay the licensor an administrative fee of three hundred and twenty-five dollars for the preparation of this license agreement, which shall be submitted by the licensee upon the execution of this license agreement period and then strike everything else. So uh, help me out here from what's on the screen. This yep. this the, for this yeah, there is, yep, it's right from there all no. the way down to here. Yeah. Yep. So license. So we would be <coughs> eliminating licensee agrees to pay an annual administrative fee of $30 for the management of this license agreement. Licensee agrees to pay the licensor an annual license fee in the amount of ten dollars. The two aforementioned annual fees shall be submitted by licensee by July 1, 2024, and submitted annually every July 1st thereafter. So those would be if somebody makes a motion yep. and agrees to that, then uh, you just need to say amended as discussed by omitting uh, the one. Uh, two, I, <laughs> two sentences noted. We, uh, we, need may, line, we need line numbers on these for next Mayor, um, I, I move that we uh, approve the license agreement between the City of Rehoboth Beach and FRW Portfolio LLC um, as presented with the um, one modification of deleting sentences two, three, and four in chapter three. Um, as the city solicitor has read publicly. Second. Uh, eliminating s sentences two, three, and four, you said? Yeah. No. That's correct. This is sentence two right here. Oh, right. I'm sorry. It's easier. You're right. Yeah. You're yeah. Right. Yeah. right. I missed the first it's, one. Yeah, three, four, and three. five. Sentences three, four, and five. Uh, sentences three, three and four. four. It's only three and four. Three, four, and five. Because you've got a period there. You've got a period there. Yeah, it's 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 three. It's three, four, and five. There's one sentence for the thirty dollars, one sentence for the ten dollars, and one sentence for the date. Three, four, and five. Three, four, and five. So you amended. <laughs> so do, do you amended uh, your motion? Has somebody seconded? I did. Second again. And you'll just re-second. All righty. Uh, with that, we have a motion by Commissioner Ed Stranowski and a second by Commissioner Tony Sharp uh, to authorize city manager to enter into the license agreement before us with the changes of deletion of sentences three, four, and five in paragraph number three. Uh, is there any further discussion up here? Uh, if not, then all those in favor signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Those opposed? And the motion carries, and the license agreement is authorized for Above the Dunes. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, we'll go to our, our last business uh, of new business, discuss and consider authorizing execution of a traffic and parking study to Rossi Group in the amount of $150,000. Uh, Lawrence? Uh, thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. As you know, this is a, a part of the com Comprehensive de Development Plan. Uh, what we've done over the last several weeks is uh, court multiple meetings with Rossi Group. Uh, Assistant City Manager Evan Miller and I, along with other members of staff, have uh, conducted meetings with them. I believe this is uh, the culmination of, of a lot of different uh, discussions, uh, a lot of different uh, documents were provided. Uh, we believe Rossi is well postured and well placed to uh, handle this particular uh, study over time and space. And I think getting this one approved today will make sure that we are ready to uh, move forward as the summer season approaches. Uh, and so we can get this, the results of this one ready to go uh, early next year and we can act upon it during the next development process of the budget. So city manager, just to be clear, would there be any statistics or anything gathered this this season, yes. summer of 2023? They, are, they will be posturing on the ground in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I just wanted to make that clear in public because there seems to be yes. a little confusion. My apologies for the confusion on that one. Oh, I don't know that you're the one that's confused, <laughs> but the the preliminary work, the baseline work begins this summer. This summer. Thank you. Anybody else? I I, I have a, a couple of questions. Um, uh, in the building, um, sorry, Streets and Transportation Committee meeting yesterday, uh, one of the uh, more recent concerns that I'm hearing from the committee members and the members of the public um, are the use of um, electronic electric bikes, I guess, and the speed at which they go around. Um, do you believe that there would be any way to incorporate that into the scope? Or is that sort of covered in some of the areas that they're talking about, cyclists and um, pedestrians? I, 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 I believe it, it will be covered in multiple areas. Uh, if you look on that's gonna be page four or five, uh, subsection uh, improvement options number five, number J or letter J, alternate modes of transportation, community and private shuttle services, ride share and non-compliant Del Dot vehicles. That'll be the host of all different types of vehicles, okay. whether it be scooters, electric vehicles of any sort. Those we've specifically called that out to the uh, uh, Lex, I believe her name is, she's the head consultant and uh, that will be delivered. Um, we know this is uh, where, where the emerging trends are going, and we want to be on the forefront of that one. Um, thank you for that that answer. Um, so my, I guess one con I, not concern, but um, I, I want to be prepared for um, on the middle of page three, um, after um, at the end of section three, um, there's a highlighted. Mm -hmm. Um, section that says Rossi Group reserves the right to request additional fee of $50,000 for traffic counts and acquiring data if the city does not have the data readily available. I, I think a big part of this, this study is going to be traffic counts and congestion and flow of traffic. And to my knowledge, we have one machine that is capable of doing that. Um, it, have we Have you talked internally about how we would assist them in gathering data, or are we just assuming that we're, we're going to have to spend 50 grand? The, the assumption is that's the outside assumption that that, that, that request would be made. Uh, I believe Rossi Group put that there as a, simply as the contingency, just in case something happens. Uh, Assistant City Manager Evan Miller, uh, along with Public Works Director Kevin Williams, uh, interviewed, and we're going to bring on two specifically engineer uh, interns to help with this. With this um, data count as well as we've already made contacts within DART and the various other entities that will help us provide data collection, things of that nature, to bring that information to our fingertips so we can share with the consultant. Because uh, I think that's a 
incredibly important. There, there's every piece of information we can get our hands on, we're going to share with them in, in the coming days uh, should this uh, proposal be approved so we can make sure that they are well postured uh, for, because one of the key components is reconciliation of all prior studies and all information points that we can provide to them to take a holistic view of both <gasps> traffic and parking within the city. And they will have access to all of our data in the parking system, right. um, mm. as well as uh, the 911 dispatch and police reports and, and all of that as well. I, I will got to get back on that one. I don't know if we can give them access to Delgis or not. Well, I think um, certainly we already make some of the information available publicly in the form of monthly reports, the police mm -hmm. department monthly yeah. reports. Um, the other thing I'd say is uh, largely, you know, what our efforts are going to be is coordinating with other agencies to figure out what data is available. Uh, you re you'll recall back when we were doing the comprehensive development plan, um, Susan Gay actually came and mentioned Del Dot does traffic counts for sections of Rehoboth Avenue, I think Rehoboth Avenue extended. Yeah. So a lot of our efforts are going to be focused on where we can coordinate with other agencies, other groups, uh, as well as internally with other departments to find that relevant data and make that available as opposed to just, um, you know, paying to have that data collected. Excellent. The well, intent okay. is not to use that. I mean, only when, if, it, if we cannot get a hold of that data and they requ we require them to go out and uh, grab that data for us, if it's not found, then, then that's a conversation we will have with Rossi Group in detail. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I think you both did a fantastic job making sure that this was comprehensive and you've covered all the angles. And I'm really glad to hear that you've got two engineer interns um, or engineer student interns that are, are going to be helping out. I, I'm happy to see this move forward and glad we're going to be able to get it done this summer. Uh, not necessarily done this summer, but started. But started. started. started we're, this we're, summer. we're getting the data collected this right, summer. Right, right. So it says, uh, Mayor, it says the final report is due April 2024. That, that will have to be adjusted. I'm sorry? That will have to be adjusted. We've already spoken with Rossi Group, but we didn't want to hold this up. Right. We, so, we believe the final report will be coming in in February. That's that's the goal. February of 2024. So the recommendations could be implemented for the 2024 season. Yes, right. We'll have draft reports coming in, and I think we'll have opportunities for inclusion in, de in the development process of the budget. But we're looking to get that final report no later than February. Okay. To, for presentation to the board of commissioners and the mayor. We're we're definitely going to need some draft ideas going into the budget season for sure. That's been um, some of the things that we've talked about internally, actually, that was one of Lynn's ideas uh, with this, was to at least get some type of preliminary draft report early on, because we start budget development in November, December, with first meetings occurring in January. So ideally, if we can have some of those early deliverables by November, December, we can begin to discuss those things. And uh, as you know, at the end of the summer season, we like to talk about parking uh, towards the end. So as the season wraps up in September, you know, come October, we typically start to give an end of season report update on how the summer went and then begin to talk about uh, changes for next season. So, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a few notes in, in miscellaneous order. Uh, page one it talks about the $150,000 contract. I actually think that's somewhat reasonable for the job scope. It's so expansive. Uh, however, uh, you know, I, I make note that this is not a fixed fee proposal. It's got these other uh, costs in there, so the final cost is unknown. I, I, I fully believe that if I vote for it and I'm agreeing to $150,000, i am really agreeing to $200,000 plus. Thousand, so. Uh, I'm aware of that. The uh, collection data and field verification conducted in uh, summer of 2023, that's great. A uh, study completed by May 2024, you just indicated it hopefully would be done earlier. That actually uh, helps respond to one constituent that gave us uh, comment that, gosh, we won't be able to implement new things. I was thinking even if it came in May 2024, if we're alert and attuned to something, and want to change it, that that's a possibility anyhow. I wouldn't, I wouldn't count it out. Hearing that it could be done earlier, I think, would be a bonus, uh, absolutely. Uh, the uh, commissioner's briefings, uh, it says, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really looking at this in terms of uh, doing a lot of public input and having commissioners have the input. 
Uh, and when I hear that it's just commissioner briefings, it scares me a little because I don't know what a briefing is. If it's just telling us something and we're not allowed to f give feedback or something, uh, then, uh, then uh, I would be cautious about that. Because uh, I do think that at, at these briefings, uh, one in October 2023 and one in March 2024, that there ought to be opportunity for questions and answers for the Board of Commissioners and for the members of the public. Because uh, uh, we can gain a lot, I think, from members of the public. And again, just the way I read it, uh, they're talking about virtual events and in-person meetings. I think that's with the city staff, though. That's not intended for the public. But these other briefings, uh, I want to read into it uh, and would request that, that they, they be rather extensive. Uh, and I'm, I'm not sure that I want to commit right this minute to October 20th and March 5th. Those are our regular meetings. We may have, we may decide working in conjunction with you all that a special meeting is better or something like that. So, uh, but I think those are good goals to have written down. The um, uh, linking this to the comprehensive development plan, uh, chapter six, transportation and infrastructure uh, is excellent. Uh, we were request, uh, requesting available prior studies. Uh, what I would like to do is make sure that all this stuff is archived, that we set up a folder uh, in the portal for this particular project, archive all the old studies so that they're accessible not just to us, but all the members of the public. Uh, and, and similarly, when we do reach out to constituents, whether whether uh, they're unsolicited or solicited uh, feedback, uh, I would like them in a folder also, so that again, all of us, including the public, have the opportunity to uh, to see what's being said and offered. Uh, the uh, they talk about on page three of five, the very last sentence in under number three. Mm -hmm. It says the existing data collection will include site visits and may include. Is, do they really mean the proposed data collection will include? No, they, were, they will be using existing information data sets that we currently have, whether it's, whether it's GIS or available GIS mapping. Um, they, there are studies, there are information uh, uh, data sets that we are going to provide them to help them uh, get their body of knowledge up to a, a better understanding before they even walk into the door. Uh, I, I understand that. It just, so. it just reads funny to me. That's all because uh, existing data collection will include site visits. But uh, I understand okay. what you're saying. The, uh, uh, I don't. I don't know if it's been made public yet, um, or pre even presented to the commissioners. The 2022 parking inventory. Just want to remind everybody that Rossi uh, was the uh, traffic, or uh, what do you call him, uh, en engineering consultant that we yes. use for the Wilmington Baltimore Streetscape Task Force. Uh, they also did this uh, 2022 parking inventory, so that could go onto the portal too. That would be helpful. Uh, the, uh, they talk about anec anecdotal information shared by the public. Uh, again, I want that in project folders, et cetera. Uh, and, and it indicates in public involvement, stakeholder surveys will include virtual meetings or phone interviews. Um, I'm not sure I agree with that. I would rather have in-person meetings, the charrettes we used to have in the old days uh, where people could actually come in and you could have a conversation with multiple people. Uh, I think this is incredibly important, but uh, uh, the scope of work does not include a public workshop. Uh, gives me a little pause, however. Uh, I'm also mindful that this is phase one of the project, if you will, that they will come back and they will have these two briefings for the commissioners or hopefully their extended meetings. Uh, and and public has input, we have input, and then at some point when they hand it over to us, uh, I think we need to be mindful that there will still be many, many meetings to go over these. We're not just implementing all the recommendations with, with snap of fingers. You know, there, there still be should be opportunity for uh, the public and the commissioners to to give input. So uh, again, nothing implemented without additional public discussion. 
uh, and the t timing of this. You know, I'm, I think this is a little rushed. I wish there was a little more time on it. However, I'm also mindful of the benefits of being able to start this summer with respect to any and everything parking, but also with respect to the Wilmington Baltimore streetscape project. Otherwise, this delays it a little bit. So uh, I'm comfortable uh, voting on it. Uh, Mayor, I have two the, things, if, yes, you're, if you uh, would, would allow. Who is managing the day, who's gonna be managing the day-to-day -day, um, Rossi consultants? Uh, it'll probably be a combination of Lawrence, myself, and Kevin Williams. So who's the point person? Uh, generally, uh, <laughs> it, it's... It, and maybe y'all need to discuss that at sure. some point. I don't mean to put you on the spot. I'm just wondering if you have three that are leading, you know, somewhat different aspects of it, who's the point person for, um, for the project? Because my second comment dovetails with what you were asking about, Mayor, on the... Um, incremental reporting. Mm -hmm. And I think I have a little bit different um, expectation, and I just wanna make sure I'm thinking along the right lines. That since we have our city manager and our assistant city manager at most of our public meetings, I'm assuming, and I just wanna confirm, that those opportunities will be taken to tell us exactly what's going on with Rossi, how is it going, is it on schedule, is it behind schedule, are we gleaning some really interesting information when you're ready to share? So the, the two dates that are mentioned to me are just a bit more formal than I expect that we are kept in the loop as this goes on, because I don't have to tell anybody that a traffic study is sometimes not fondly received by our um, residents because what I think they're looking for is action. And what we need to get from where we are to action is the traffic study. So if we keep the... Um, information flow? Well, absolutely, the information flow. And, and I think you're thinking along the same lines that I am. If we keep it front and center of what we're getting for our taxpaying dollars, then I think that's much more palatable sure. as we get toward the end and then we move toward the budget and making decisions of what do we want to do mm -hmm. in however many phases. So that's all I wanted. Thank, thank, thank you. you. And, and I, I agree with you, but I want to make sure that that information flow at certain times goes two ways. Absolutely. Yeah. Will there be enough? In, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tim. That's a, oh, I, I just had a question under uh, study description, purpose, and need, and it looks we'll, like what we'll page you on there? It's uh, it's page two, and uh, the the first uh, paragraph there where it talks about a detailed description of the study, including its purpose and need, and uh, then it goes on to say that that will be included in the briefing to the board of commissioners, which, if I look at the schedule, isn't until October of this year, and if they're doing it this summer, I think we need that a little sooner. And again, I don't mean to put anybody on the spot, I think this is comprehensive, but I'm sure, Evan, you're very familiar with parking in particular, and if I asked you what the top three deliverables should be from this or what our priorities are, I think we need to make sure we're pretty clear on that, and certainly before October. Could we put a, could we put this on a, on a, Agenda item on our regular meeting is an update on uh, the parking uh, study by Kevin. There'll be Kevin Lawrence. Well, all you'll be at the meeting. I absolutely. I think that I think um, updates early and often are what yeah. we're going to do, or mm -hmm. we're going to use to make sure there are no um, surprises on anything. Um, Lynn and I have talked about this uh, greatly as far as community engagement. Uh, using uh, a potential engagement uh, module to help uh, both survey and understand what the both the residents are using, different opportunities for visitor engagement to see what some of the pain points are. So every, every opportunity will be used um, to include new and unique opportunities to, uh, to receive that feedback, but also uh, interaction with both the Board of Commissioners and the public. Right. I mean, this I'm, is, I'm just this is not a one and done kind of right. thing. I'm piggybacking on what Commissioner Sharp said because um, 
I think if you asked anybody in town, we have a traffic issue. We've had a traffic issue since the 60s, if you read any of the old brochures. So I, I would just like us to be more direct as to we're doing this traffic study because I don't, we don't need to tell them that we have an issue with parking and we have an issue with, <laughs> with, uh, you know, with crowds in the summer. But what, what do we expect that this study is going to deliver for us that we can take action on? And I think we just need to be clear with Rossi rather than them coming back and saying you don't have enough parking. Which, <laughs> which we understand. So, and I know you're on top of that. Yeah. I just would like them to spell that out for us. I think the. Uh, I mean, if you look on page uh, four specifically, the uh, the, the improvement options, it, although fairly broad in category, each one of those encompasses numerous items. Uh, specifically, if you're going to even talk traffic calming, traffic calming can, can mean literally hundreds of things. Everything from silent policemen to uh, speed humps, to traffic circles, and, and you know probably two, 200 plus pages right. of opportunities to have that. So th those larger items encompass things that uh, uh, across the depth and breadth of, of various different manuals uh, that will be looked at and with potential options improvements provided. Because it's important to, to look at every op almost every opportunity we can um, we, we toured with the opportunity of providing a problem statement to see how this, what problem this particular traffic study is going to address, but it got a little long. So right. we went ahead and um, looked at just, we, we kind of know it's a traffic and parking study. Um, well, I'm, glad, I'm glad to hear that, so thank you. Thank you, Ron. Anything else up here? I'd like to go to the public if that's all right. Any members of the public like to uh, comment on anything? Patricia, Patty, Patty, go ahead. And, and remember, this is specific to this traffic and parking study. Nah, I'm, st I'm still going to get. I'm still going to get you. You've been very patient. We're not going to let you get out of here without giving your speech. Patty, you, uh, Patty lives on the corner of. Uh, and Patty, we're talking about a parking and parking and the traffic traffic study, study right now. Okay. Um, my name is Patty Brown. I live at One State Road. Um, do you have a camera? on the pole that maybe you guys can put up or whether you already have one up there. And you can see how that intersection goes up and down. And you can follow the traffic study that way on this pole, you know. I think that, that will probably be on your list, won't it? It, it? it very well could be, actually. One of the things uh, I know that we had conversations with Rossi about on the Wilmington Baltimore Avenue street, uh, streetscape concept, because you recall the, they were the consultant that we used for that project. Uh, was actually looking at, again, doing a bump out project where we test to see what the design, how the design lays out in the field and how it actually works. And one of the things that they had mentioned was partnering with Dell Dot to bring in a uh, camera trailer to be able to collect data and collect video when somebody is unable to physically be there to observe that. So that could certainly be an option that we look at as well. Well, my concern is it's State Road that intersection where all the problems are there. But you can also have it where it's going up Grove Street and you can see the cars coming in there. Mm -hmm. And then that might help. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Patty. Thank you. Um, and I guess you're going to reach out to Del Dot blindly and say, do you have any? Because uh, I know over the past 20 some years here, they've had a trailer with a big master doing something, taking pictures or counting or something up there at the, the circle area. Very good. Any any other uh, members of the public like to say anything specific to this topic on the parking and traffic study? Mrs. Keller, Kelleher, uh, uh, Francis Kelleher, resident, um, and maybe this doesn't need to be said, but you know I think when you set up a study, it really has to be prospectively uh, defined. We used to talk about smart targets, specific, measurable, et cetera, et cetera. So I guess I'm relying that that is being done because it is all about what you set up at the beginning is what you're going to get at the end. And I, when you made the comment about maybe it being a little rushed, I think better not to rush if if you you know want to make sure that what you want to get is. Um, is being uh, planned for up front. Thank you, thank you, Walter. Name, name, and relationship. Walter Brittingham, one twenty-three on Lippin Avenue. The technology of today is you don't have to bring a trailer in. They 
bring a two inch expandable pole. They have the miniature cameras on the top of them. They have a box at the bottom. You don't even know what it's there unless you're looking for a television camera. They usually strap them to another fixed pole, whether it be a Delmarva or Verizon pole or a street light pole. And so you don't, you don't need trailers. They can just go out and stick them up in the air. And the technology exists, uh, notwithstanding what you see on the highway, um, with the variable message boards, et cetera, they actually can monitor them at Traffic Management Center in Smyrna. They can turn them on and off. They can change the directions and everything else. So as you folks are familiar with items of sort, don't be afraid to ask for it because um, that gives you the video proof to come back and look at it months later. Thank you. Thank you, Walter. Anybody else? Go ahead. Just state your name again. Francis Kelleher. I just thought of one other thing. Is and I don't. I'm sorry. I haven't read the thing. But Evan. Are we, this is Evan. Evan. Is it being? Um, are we looking for like a typical summer? day, a typical summer weekday, a typical summer weekend, or a 4th of July weekend? Are we evaluating the various things? Uh, you know, uh, my biggest headache in traffic occurs uh, at the Sea Witch Festival, because that's where they block off State Road. Uh, so again, I, you know, it kind of goes back to specific, measurable. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, just to address the um, the comment. So uh, it's certainly the average uh, weekend day or weekday uh, is something that we want to collect, but also just for my personal observations, even down to weather events. I think we all know that during the summer season when you have a quick heavy rainstorm that rolls in off the beach, Rehoboth Avenue gets backed up and Lake Avenue gets backed up. So also having an awareness of those odd events that occur and the impact that it has on traffic is going to be another area that we focus on as well. If everybody look on page five, you'll see a list of the deliverables and that'll help a little bit too. I think the uh, scope of services is, is one of the best that I have seen. I looked at a few contracts and uh, I, I agree with everything that we've said, and I think, I think it's a pretty well defined and laid out. And uh, as I, what do we do? Do we need to move to get it, to give well, a uh, uh, notice to proceed? Yeah, what, yes, uh, Commissioner, what I'd like uh, is a motion to author, uh, authorize execution of a traffic and parking study to Rossi Group in the amount of 150,000 plus uh, needed additional change orders. I, I don't know how to, how to write it, but somehow we should authorize the city manager to be able to spend more. I don't know. Whether I we think, need, I, not well, to or come back and right. talk to us if they need more. Yeah. That's easier. Would you rather do that? I would. Okay. So, so just the, the, the mo you have the agenda in front of you? It's just uh, uh, authorize execution of a traffic and parking study to Rossi Group in the amount of $150,000. And issue a notice to proceed. That, that, I, that's I, that's, I'm, that's huh? not needed. <laughs> that's automatic. That's what they're asking for. I, I, uh, I move that we accept the uh, scope of services as defined by Rossi and uh, the amounts uh, that are indicated on their April 7th scope of services and that we uh, accept those accept that scope and the the uh, the funding that's that's listed which is 150,000 plus 50,000 for for contingency and uh, that we offer a notice to proceed second we have a motion by commissioner Jay Legreen a second by commissioner Ed Stranowski uh, to uh, authorize execution of a tra traffic and parking study to Rossi Group in the amount of 150000 uh, as noted in our discussions today. Does that cover it all? It, it does. Uh, the only thing I'd add is that the maker of the motion um, included the additional $50,000, and the city manager indicated that he would prefer to come back, so that the authorization is for the first $150,000, right? You want that? So we, we just want you to delete to stop at 150,000. 
Okay, and... Uh, you accept the friendly amendment. If, if, yeah. I move we authorize 150000 and additional sums as no. uh, requested by the um, uh, city manager. You want that? That works well. That'll be fine. That works well. And, and uh, you agree to that second? Ed? I, I do, yes. Okay. Good, okay. good going. So we have a modified uh, motion to uh, essentially authorize execution of the traffic and parking study to Rossi Group in the amount of $150,000 plus. Uh, is there any further discussion? Commissioner Marker? I just want to make one comment. When we were eliciting uh, public comment, um, Suzanne Good had made a commentary in, one of her, in her correspondence. I didn't want to overlook that. Um, yeah, I, meant, I did mention her earlier. Okay, and, okay. And but she's, in, she's in terms also... of what she was talking about, uh, uh, urging us to uh, stress uh, um, enforcement and, 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 and new regulations as a, and not, not to uh, engage in the study. But I just wanted to make sure that that was on the record. Yep, and okay. that's embedded in the agenda. Two letters okay. from Suzanne Good. Uh, if there's no further discussion, all those, uh, uh, I assume we're going to have unanimity. All those in favor of... Uh, uh, the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your work on it. Thank you for your work on it, and Glenn, too. Uh, with that, we'll go to commissioner announcements and comments. Do we have anything? We're getting very close to citizen comments, so be ready. Be ready. Uh, I have citizen one. Citizen comment. Go ahead, commissioner. I just we just finished the stormwater task force and the and this net contract that we signed there and I refer to that scope of services many many times so this is this is great thank you anybody else uh, with that we'll go to review future meeting dates these are meeting dates of the Board of Commissioners uh, Monday May 8th is a workshop meeting at 9 a.m. Monday also Monday May 8th at 2 p.m. is a special meeting where we're primarily focusing on permits of compliance, uh, potential license agreements associated with permits of compliance. Uh, and then Friday, May 19th, they have a regular meeting at 2 o'clock p.m. With that, we get to citizen comments. Would you like to come up uh, again? You best uh, start over again with your name, relationship to the city. And I want you to talk two inches from that microphone so we can hear you very clearly. My name is Deb Kennedy. I'm a resident on 6th Street, and I re represent Seaside at Rehoboth Beach. It's uh, nine condominiums right there on Grove, where the sidewalk's going in. Mm -hmm. um, ever, well, since uh, Rise has been in town and Egg, the, the parking is crazy, and we can't get out of 6th Street. Um, that corner house there, as you exit Rise, there's two spot, uh, parking spots there. And if there's an SUV or a really anything there parked, which there always is, you have to basically ease out onto 6th Street there, and someone's going to have a horrific accident. Uh, they come out of the circle, like, you know, pretty fast, and there's not much room between the circle exit onto Grove and 6th Street. And I don't there has been accidents but it's it's pretty bad there and also to the right of 6th street um where the sidewalk is going to be and um they they park right there too so you really have to edge out and it's just really dangerous i don't know if you need a speed bump or i don't know the answer other than to get rid of some of the parking spots on 6th street or speed bump, uh, it's it's just really dangerous. And everyone on 6th Street is, nobody has is here except for Pat and I, but everybody's complaining because it's an, an accident that's going to be happening. Yeah. We hear you. We hear you. Can, uh, can I give well, an update for, for Deb? What? Could, could I respond? Sure. Yeah, um, Deb, just so you know that we've gotten re a lot of correspondence from folks on 6th and Grove and, and State. Um, and the Streets and Tran Transportation Committee will be taking up this issue uh, at our next meeting, which is May 18th at 3 p.m. Okay. Um, and we're specifically going to talk about those two parking spots that you've mentioned, right. as well as 
the entire traffic and safety condition from the circle all the way to the intersection at state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's good, good. Happy. To we hear we do hear you, and we are we are looking at. Good, at good. It. Also, that Sixth Street. There's I don't know who to contact. I contacted um, um, Delaware Electric. There's not enough lighting. It's so dark in the middle of that street. And then I they and I did contact Rehoboth, and Rehoboth told me to contact Delaware um, Electric. And then, you know, they keep pushing me back on Rehoboth and Delaware because it's so dark. We need like another street light in the middle um, of Sixth Street. So we are almost at the end of this meeting, and what what I'd like you to do, if you don't mind, is sure. meet with uh, Commissioner Chernowski afterwards. He's chair of the Street and Transportation Committee, and if you would wouldn't mind uh, exchanging your name, sure. uh, number, or e email address, he can at least alert you to the next agenda and when it's on there. Uh, if you can attend, that's optimum. But if you can't, then maybe you can work sure. with. Uh, telling him in writing or over the phone what some of your concerns are so that we can forward them to the city manager for uh, further action. Okay, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for Thank your patience. You. Thank Actually, you. for your stamina, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. I have, I have a question. Yeah. Are, is the, side, the sidewalk, is that going on that street as well? Is it going the whole length? Yes. It is. It yeah. is. Yeah. So, Not six. Not grove. Six. Just Grove. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Walter, I have Mrs. Kelleher next, and then, and then I got you. Francis Kelleher, resident. Um, I'll just start out by saying, bear with me a bit because they say scientists are very good at writing they're not that good at speaking in general and that's me I'm not that good at speaking uh, so um, so my house um, in would you rather stand at the podium oh no I'm good okay okay um, my house and country club estates uh, was built at the time that the country club estates property owners association uh, was responsible for building and country club estates we had the following restriction for building. Um, and I just hold this up <laughs> for everyone mm -hmm. to see, exhibit A. Uh, there was a restriction that read, the contour of the land may not be changed on any lot at any time of building or any time thereafter. Um, and I'm sorry, that is in the the covenants of country club estate so property I'll just owners. Read the top. Uh, the following restrictions and procedures have been established for building and the country club estates development. This is in accordance with paragraphs five and six of Schedule A, Declaration right. of Restrictions, Country Club Estates, which is included in all deeds in the subdivision. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to, rec uh, I have found out the hard way that this, just this one, I mean, I would say that when the city of Rehoboth took over the um, responsibility for building uh, zoning and country club estates that um, these other things are pretty, I think, all covered. Uh, but I found out the hard way that the contour of land is um, I wanted to say that I'm requesting that this restriction be added to the ordinance of the city of Rehoboth. And I would like to say why, why is this needed? Well, most lots in Rehoboth are flat. People may not realize that some city lots, for example, along the 300 block of Stokely Street, slope down from the sidewalk down to Silver Lake and to the designated swale area at the tip of Silver Lake. Uh, the house to the right of my house was torn down recently and a new house built. The new homeowners raised the elevation of the land on their lot. In the back, it was raised approximately one to two feet uh, in order to create a quote, flat backyard. 
Um, this coupled with their sump pump discharge, air conditioning condensation discharge, and irrigation, excessive, I'll say, excessive irrigation, uh, led to an extended period of time where the right side of my house up to my foundation was flooded. I'm showing this. Uh, this is the house that backs up to my house at 503 School Lane in School View. Uh, those properties, as you know, uh, have large, uh, it's a half an acre property. I know this picture is very tiny, but I think it's, it has a beautiful slope all the way down to the lake. You can kind of see it here where their, their land is all wooded. Uh, it is protected because there is a designated flood, 100-year uh, flood zone in, as part of that swale area. And um, so it's not uh, technically buildable. Um, and it's tree covered, at least at the back of my house. It's all nicely tree covered. This house is for sale now, and uh, of course the realtors are advocating for, you know, build new or install an in-ground pool. <laughs> so, my concern uh, is that um, um, uh, sorry, concern that the natural contour of the land would be changed. Um, I would also like to highlight part of the CDP that speaks to a goal of looking into a quote buffer zone or expanding a buffer zone by the lakes. And I would like to ask if the city would consider prioritizing that uh, as a way of further protecting uh, the, the uh, swale uh, area. Um, so I wish I wasn't being recorded, but I'm going to say this anyway. I uh, was, it made me upset to hear uh, the other day or other week or whenever at the tree code that a lady in Rehoboth had actually been crying uh, because the uh, paving of a hotel led to the flooding of her home. So it, it made her so distraught that she, you know, brought her to tears. I'm not going to cry before you today, but I want to say I have cried uh, over the frustration of dealing with this issue of this continuous flooding of my property um, the raising of the elevation on the right side of my lot basically made me not the back swale of the property, but I became the side swale. Um, and, um, uh, you know, I, I just want to say I have had, you know, I wore my Keep Calm shirt. I bought this when I used to take my VW Touareg to Smith VW because every time I brought it there, it cost me thousands of dollars to get it repaired. So I always wore this to try to keep calm. So I wore it today to try to keep calm. And uh, But I would like you to, uh, to know, uh, not that it matters, but I have had countless nights where I can't sleep. I've made myself sick trying to resolve all the problems. Uh, and so I just want to put that human face on this issue for you, that it is a, you know, a real issue and should be addressed. And I know it may only affect a very small number of properties in Rehoboth that have slope, natural uh, slope to their yards. Uh, but nonetheless, I think it's very important um, not only for property owners, but even just the whole spirit of the natural, uh, natural uh, 
uh, environment being maintained. Thank you very much. Uh, we hear you. And, uh, you know, the city manager's here. I'm, I'm sure he hears you. He's got a lot on his plate being new here. Uh, so he's getting an earful. But I want, I want to tell him and you that uh, it, is, it is a big problem. You know, when, when water from an adjoining house comes over and intrudes on your property and causes erosion and causes floods, uh, it is a, absolutely a things. severe problem, especially when people add swimming pools or when they tear down a house and build new and the uh, new house is almost on a plateau uh, so so that you an elevated plateau exactly it's exactly. like i said if you want to live out in where there are elevated plateaus live there this is like atlantic coastal plain uh, but we do have you know and that's why i did bring up even though we're really basically flat, we really do have areas that Fine. slope naturally. And, uh, you know, it just should not be allowed to build an elevated plateau uh, in the city. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, uh, Walter, you're next, please. Good afternoon, Walter Brittingham, 123 Hennepin oh. Avenue. Yeah. The, the lady's frustration oh, is a civil yeah. issue, From me, I got some notes to and see. building and licensing could help, but building and licensing have been overloaded. There's other people that have problems. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the city manager. Uh, I made some mention beforehand, and he came in and talked um, or gave a report about the $44,000 sidewalk um, on Grove Street, which was very appropriate. Um, it's what should have been done right to begin with, but there was reason to break it out. But you are right on target to do it. Um, to those that don't know, Bacon Engineering or Beacon Engineering did the work and it came in at 298000 um, and they basically finished pending the installation of the fixtures, and but the city manager within his authorities got permission to add unitary measurement, and they sent it over to 6th Street, which is a good solution. Um, in line with the lady's comment about parking, you also so solved a second problem because I had mentioned when they brought the crosswalk across State Road and dumped the people out onto 6th Street, that once you put the sidewalk in, you didn't have to provide a methodology for the people on bicycles and walking um, to get down the street. So now you can have all those parking spaces. You didn't lose any parking spaces from Rise all the way to the corner of State Road. So good job. Um, I'd like to make a simple comment. Um, I go back, I've been here a long time, um, and appreciate the comment, and I would talk with a city employee, um, was very positive. And now we have a possibility of a stormwater division in the building, and uh, never was there enough planning for parking on either side of the building, and so, my understanding is, and I'm, I understand I'm not entitled to an answer, I'm not being smart, but that the parking spaces behind the firehouse on one side are going to be for employee parking, et cetera, uh, at least on one side. So I would encourage you to really think about the signs because you have some people who are not eight to four, so those there'll just be a lot more certificates hanging in the cars just saying city employee exempt and they, they don't get a ticket. However, um, I go back a long time ago, which I won't explain. Um, the parking spaces closest to the building should be for the people that are visiting this building. The people that are going to come to work, the employees, should have to park in the far end of the lot if they're only going to have to park on one end. But let the people that the cars are going to stay there all day long we appreciate the car, the parking spaces for the firehouse and for the city business, and they work very, very well. But there's just no necessity to have the parking spaces that are out here 
um, that the city employees that come in first, they can park closest to the building, and then other people that are walking with canes or whatever, let them have the parking spaces at the top of the hill. The, um, the project uh, at State Road went very, very nicely. Um, I, I would like to diverge for just a second and tell you what happens with television. Commissioner Legree um, was expressing the frustration to the TV station, and in the interview, as he was speaking, the lady in the background has the two dogs right up at the boardwalk and unclips both dogs and lets them run loose. And that's terrible. It goes back to no enforcement. So somewhere it's along. So la the last thing I'd, I'd like to speak about, and I'll keep it very short, um, this construction project, which was separate, it was piggybacked on, which I have no problem with. They got it taken care of at Grove Street at Patty Brown's house. I, um, between there and 6th Street, there were no detour signs. There were no ma variable message boards. There was nothing on Grove Street that said um, no state road access. And coming in Rehoboth Avenue, there weren't variable message boards there, of which we have didn't appear to be being used, and they, they should have been in place. I can understand why you didn't want to have to pay for the road guards. They were very, excuse me, the flag people. They were very expensive, and they added to the cost of the project. But there was a serious lack of coordination, and the only reason I bring this up is because you weren't here yesterday. So you have city people the streets department, the police department, the public works director, the special projects director, that would be the assistant city manager. And nobody, nobody straightened out the problem and put up the signs that should have been there. For this one block project and you had buses pulling up and turning around in the middle of the street because it wasn't done right again. And nobody, we used to do it right and there used to be a conversation. And when you go out and the fire company doesn't have the fire policemen do the job right, people get lost. You didn't do a good job on this. And this was the rest of the project. Otherwise, thank you for the sidewalk. You did a good job. Thank you, Walter. Anybody else? Uh, if not, <coughs> turn it back over to the city manager for a minute. Thank you, Mr. Can, uh, Mayor. Continue Please. with uh, commissioner comments or city manager comments. Just wanted to close out a couple things from Commissioner Agree. We had a, a couple of highlights that you asked for a couple uh, specific yeah. numbers. Yeah. Um, for that, that state road uh, pedestrian project, I, um, Walter pointed out, Mr. Birmingham pointed out, that was uh, originally came at 298,000 with the in cost increases. It was total at 310,923,000. Mm -hmm. That was traffic calming, paving utilities and such for that particular project. Uh, that's not including the change order that was uh, approved for 44,000 for this particular uh, that um, sidewalk project. Um, from the budget, uh, 2.7 million dollars was for the state road pump station. Uh, that's a rather large project. If you know, we're going to start um, excavation and, and and demolition of that one. That's going to go building and Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong, subterranean at least one story, one full story down below. I mean, uh, Public Works Director uh, Kevin Williams showed me the, uh, the decay uh, of what the, that particular state road pump station is, and it's significant. So that's gonna be a rather large project. So uh, looking forward to kind of getting that one done. And that bypass pumping, uh, we're getting a notification out to the various uh, entities. So as you're coming around the, the street there, those dart buses will be notified because we'll make sure they're, you know, because that's, be, that's gonna be a tractor trailer trailer on the property for bypass pumping. So it will be a significant emotional event. Thank you. I knew it was gonna get up there. I didn't know how far it had gone. Yeah. Thank you. So, thank you, Mr. Birmingham. appreciate that one. Pre appreciate your commentary and thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, I, Yes. 
change order. Phase two for, for that per particular project. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, did you uh, at any time mention when Suzanne Good, uh, the goods curbing would start? I did not mention that one. Uh, and I don't, off the top of my head, I don't know, but. So as soon as they finish the Grove Street sidewalk, next up is the uh, ADA ramp and sidewalk on Rehoboth Avenue, and then the uh, uh, curb at, at uh, Grove and Columbia. So there'll be another week, probably week-ish, on uh, Grove and Rehoboth Avenue uh, ADA spot. So it's probably the following week before they're able to get started on Grove and Columbia. Okay. Curve. And where exactly is that Rehoboth ADA spot? Uh, it's actually in front of that, uh, that uh, the setback building that next to Lockwood. For do you remember the number? Mm. Yeah. 440-ish, yeah. We're at 330 Rehoboth Avenue next to that. Um, so if you're coming into town, Lockwood on the right on the corner, and then there's, right. a, there's a, I don't know Seahorse, but yeah. Then there's an, okay. it's not an open lot, it's just there's or a Heidi, barn kind of facility Heidi in the Lowe back. used to be there before I, before the, Dogfish. There's a lot next to her. Before Dogfish right. had. Yes, right, that lot. Mm -hmm. And you say Seahorse and I say Chili Billy. Does anybody even remember? <laughs> Go before that. Does anybody remember? <laughs> Boudreaux and Chili Billy. Uh, with that, I want to thank everybody, and uh, this meeting is... A Negative. It's a parking space uh, on the south side of Rehoboth Avenue and uh, an access ramp to get uh, a person in a wheelchair up to the sidewalk. So it's a ramp and curb cut. Thank, thank you. And with that, uh, I'll adjourn. I can't see the time. Uh, I'll adjourn this meeting at uh, 459. Thank you very much.